Hello and welcome to this week's Cities in a Snap event. I am your organizer and host, Kazjim, and I would like to thank all of you for coming out today. A couple brief things. First of all, thank you moderators who help make this happen. They help keep the chat uh, kind of sane. They also help answer a lot of questions. They also do things such as managing the Discord, managing our Facebook page, keeping the Instagram and Twitter running, and a variety of other activities such as being giveaway wardens. Also, I want to thank all of you who helped make this event happen on a weekly basis. This, ha this does take a lot of man hours on the back end, and uh, it's up to you guys to make sure that it can continue. You guys can help contribute to the Cities and Snap event directly by subscribing to this channel here, twitch.tv slash cities and snap, or by going and giving bits, or you can donate uh, directly, or you can even sign up for our Patreon link down below. And we also want to encourage all of you to let your friends know how you spend your Saturdays and also be sure to hop in the community discord. We are in there all the time. We're answering questions. We're responding to feedback and we're continually trying to make this event better for you, the viewer. Anyways, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you to this week's participants. And I hope you enjoy this week's cities in a snap. Hello! How is everyone doing? Hope everyone's having a splendid day. Absolutely splendid. Is everyone doing well? Hello! Green screen now. Yeah, there's a green screen. We're here. We're live with cities in a snap! That's right. It is time for the weekly event that has us all twisting and turving and having an absolutely glorious time every single Saturday. Cities in a snap! Snap, snap. Ten second, five, four... Three, two, one, and start! Cities in a Snap is off! We are rolling! Here we are, folks! Hello, Brainless! What is up, Brainless? The hype is real! Let's go, Headley Monorails! Alright, so diving right in now. An, a, an important change that we introduced this time. Last time, we actually made it to where they could maybe alter some roads, put some of that stuff down, because we actually had some pre-built roads, but... This time we've opted not to do that. Why did I do that? Now, one reason was we wanted to experiment with complete raw palette. Just absolutely nothing on the palette for them so that they can do whatever they want. Because that was a huge bit of input we got last time. But, also, this map has so much space on it and so much waterfront. And you can see why I picked it for waterfront shopping. So they're able to pick where they want to build. And I didn't want to corner them into a space and say, well, I have an advantage if I start here. I wanted them to go wherever they want and just have a blast. They've had the map for well over a day now. So they've been able to scout it out and see what they like. There we go. What's up, Mr. Tommy? The former reigning champion. Yay, season snap, snap, let's go, let's go indeed, share please, obviously, having coffee and ice cream, nice, there we go, so I hear, oh, nope, uh, I'm not reading that Palpatine, I'm not reading it, brainless, says casual, let you have internet access, not three times, well, yes, I gave him internet access, how else does he sit there and do my bidding, and Slim Gaming has joined us, welcome in Slim Gaming, Thank you for sharing your community with cities in a snap. The detailing in a snap edition. That's right. These are some of the best detailers in the community. They're going to be making the best that they can in just two hours time with Waterfront Shopping Center. It'll be absolutely hype. Cannot wait to see what happens here. Oh, Slimmer has arrived. That's right. The Slimmer has arrived. There we go. Hope you're doing well. Hope your stream was fantabulous. And of course, let's go ahead and rock through and let's introduce our various contestants because we've got four of them and they're all legendary. And I'm actually going to let them speak for themselves because, dude, they're just awesome. They know what they're doing more than I do. So first up, of course, we have the legendary Pirate Turtle. What's up, Pirate Turtle? Legendary, you say? <laughs> yes, legendary. I'm trying to hype you up. Uh, don't don't let don't let me live it down. Uh, so, well, thank you. Uh, so, very how much, are you sir. feeling? Uh, how's it feel to be in Cities and Snap? It's good. Today's been hell on me now. <laughs> I just I was just telling Chat like I hate waiting. 
Oh, really? Well, um, yeah. now you get to be front and center in it. So why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Because you really are quite the detailer, but not everyone's uh, really as familiar with you as a lot of us might be. So uh, why don't you go ahead and give us a quick rundown? What can we expect to see from you with your detailing style? So detailing for me is making possible in cities that we can't do with normal cities. So I try and build stuff that I can't envision you being able to do in a more vanilla style game, even with like move it and, and traffic. Um, I'm from South Africa. Uh, I've been playing the game since launch. I have uh, roughly six and a half thousand hours in the game. Oh, so obviously just getting started at that point. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know. To be fair, it takes at least a thousand or two just to, like, master the basics of this game. There's so much to it. So you yeah, do so go I for a lot of realism, too, don't you? Potato computer in the beginning. So, like, I, I only started playing mod modded, like, late last year. Oh, wow. So you're new to the modded scene. So, But you do do a lot of, like, realism builds, don't you? Mm. So what That's kind of what realism do you go right for, and uh, kind of what are you trying to think of with this waterfront shopping center? Do you have any special plans? Do you have anything that you're trying to base it off of from real life? Um, I have a, a, a big grand scheme. We'll see if I can pull it off in the, in the short time that we have available. But um, I think it will be something different for everyone. Right, so... <laughs> and Grathami has just pointed out, yeah... 3.5k hours away from finishing the tutorial. Honestly, that's how we all feel with this. So, what do you think of your competition today? What do you think of uh, your fellow competitors? What do you think of the theme itself? Uh, I thought the theme was pretty cool. Um, I don't know much about usually working. Um, Chris is obviously an insanely great builder. Um, his UK series is really good. Um, and Ari as as well great detailer so it's it's i think this is tough i think this is um people might not think it or or think about it but this is actually a, a pretty rough lineup oh it's definitely a good one definitely definitely good now also final thing so uh as far as participating uh, this is your first time participating correct correct so how's it feel to be on this side of the event this week uh, it's actually pretty cool, eh? Well, I'm glad that you're looking forward to it. And, of course, we're, go we're going to go ahead and get out of your hair, and we'll go hang out with you a little bit around the midway point. But for now, you've got a lot of building to do. Perfect. Thanks. Have a good day. Anytime. And, folks, again, that's twitch.tv slash pirate turtle. And now, of course, we will be speaking with the duck man himself, Eclipse Chris. What's up, Chris? Why, hello, Kaz. Good evening to you, man. Now, I have to ask you, on behalf of chat, on behalf of the entire yep. Skylines community, will yep. we see ducks today? Oh, you'll see more than ducks. Oh, we'll see more than ducks. Okay. Uh, are we also going to see some geese as well? Um, well, not animal related, but I'm just saying you're going to see more than just having ducks as a gimmick. Oh, okay. Good, good. So, what do you think of this week's competition? What do you think of being in Details and Snap? And also, uh, how do you feel about Details and Snap being its own separate event within Cities and Snap? I definitely think it's good to have it as its own separate thing. Um, but I think it still needs a bit of tweaking and a bit of, um, sort of, a bit more thought going into it for how the map should be presented, um, just for the whole detailing aspect. Nice. So, as far as the waterfront goes, do you have any specific waterfront shopping areas that you're trying to base it off of? Are you just kind of winging it? Or are you just going to blindly go and hope you end up with something nice? Um, a bit of everything, really. Oh, really? But, if, I, I mean, mean, hey, that's better than nothing. It's more blind, blind sort of playing, I think. More blind? Okay, so, as far as, like, your actual competition today, you've, you're up against some pretty stiff competition across the community. What do you think of them? Um, the competition wise, yeah, sorry, um, definitely everyone is really good at what they do. Um, I'm really interested to see what usually working is going to pull out his uh, story bag today. Well, of I'm course, sure we all look forward to his stories. I mean, honestly, every time he's in, I just, I have a little thing of popcorn on the side. I'm just sitting there like, oh, this is going to be so good. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just yeah. legendary. So, obviously, I mean, you're up against some good competition now. What do you think of... Uh, just the actual theme itself. Is it a theme that you think is going to work well with your build style? And are we going to expect to see any neat tricks from you aside from ducks? Um, yeah, I think water's going to play a big feature, I think. Especially for the waterfront um, theming we're doing today. 
Nice. Well, that definitely makes sense. Now, uh, final thing before I let you go. So you have been in details in the snap, cities in the snap, and you've been in our scenarios on uh, the snap. I've before. been all over the place. Yeah, Kaz. you've been all over the place. So, uh, out of the three, which one do you prefer? Um, the one thing I haven't done yet was uh, sandbox in the snap. That's the only thing I can't True, say. True, because you came of. in right after the uh, right after we started phasing out the sandbox. So yeah, yeah that's the I, only I thing. came in to try and be the one to beat Swerve Dream, but someone beat me to it, and then he let, didn't play anymore, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he, he knew you were coming. That's why he left. I mean, honestly, that's exactly let's be real. that's what I'm saying as well. Exactly. <laughs> now, uh, so once again, we're gonna go ahead and let you go. You got a lot of building to do, folks. This is twitchtv Chris. Be sure to check him out, and we will be checking you out during the midpoint interviews. Sweet, I look forward to it. Awesome. And now, of course, we are on to the legendary for his stories and kind of his cities, I guess. Usually wow. working. I, I don't think I've ever made a city before. I'm new to this. Yes, you, you obviously are. So, Mr. New to this, uh, you've obviously yes. been in this competition several times before. You're becoming very well known for your intricately woven stories and backstory for your cities and i absolutely love it it's a great extra just step of amazingness every time you have an, a great little story come in every time you have all these little niche features that just otherwise are just kind of disparate but you just find a way to perfectly weave a story i absolutely love listening to it i was just joking with the clips chris a moment ago that hey it's i gotta get my bucket of popcorn ready for this because it's gonna be great but uh so besides storytelling well you have in store for your waterfront shopping so actually today there is no story well there's a minor story there's actual real life lore uh i am going to uh, currently i am at the start of doing a monaco the principality of monaco i'm doing a monaco speed run uh my thought process is what's the what's the best place to have a waterfront shopping place monaco but not only that, what's my favorite part of Monaco, because I've never been there, uh, of course, can be the Formula One track that goes right across the front of the waterfront with all the shopping and all the boats and everything. And so that is what we're going to do is we are going to try and at least get the uh, the main waterfront, the harbor of Monaco completely built in City Skylines in two hours. Uh, that sounds include, awesome. Include the working Formula One track. So there will be Formula One cars racing through the middle of the town uh, and past all the shops and everything like that, too. That sounds really awesome. And I, I do happen to know the track you're thinking of. I've seen it in a couple of movies. It's been featured in a couple of prominent movies in the past couple of decades. So I am familiar with it. I think that's going to be awesome. And honestly, if anyone can pull it off, it's going to be you based off your last builds. I think you've got the chops for it. But it's really about the time because two hours, not a whole lot, especially since this time yeah. we didn't allow people to do any pre-existing infrastructure for season for for details and snap now and, as someone who's done these competitions several times before do you feel like two hours is enough to get any good detailing in or do you feel um, like you just have to get better at detailing in order to do it i i think it is i think it's a little different mindset um i think it's just based off of practice and based off i wouldn't necessarily say skill but it is kind of a practice and skill based um and i particular have been uh you know what I enjoy is is doing both, and uh, a lot of people can sit down and, and relax and take ten hours to make a build, and uh, and I guess I just practice doing it in in two hours. Okay, well, hey, that works because again, it's all about just getting a lot of your skills together, and I guess just pre-planning and being able to do it in a faster method. That really is what it comes down to. Now, as far as the competition this week, what do you think of it? You're up against Eclipse, Chris, Pirate Turtle, and Harry IQ. I mean, just great, absolutely great people. Um, they've been, almost all of us have been a part of the community actively for a very long time, uh, especially a lot of those guys too. So I'm, I'm very glad to be able to uh, to do it. I've, I've seen a bunch of their screenshots and everything. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of jealous and I, I just want to be able to uh, hopefully, you know, show off uh, show off some skill uh, among among some heavy hitters and, and literally like five time winners too. So. Uh, no it's pressure, true. You're, yeah, you're no pressure there. Yeah, but no, I mean, no again, pressure, no pressure. I, this is going to be a great week. I can't wait to see you do it. And I love your idea. I love your plan. Here's hoping that you can pull it off in two hours. But folks, in the meantime, this has been twitch.tv slash usually underscore working. Go check them out. See if they are the detailer for you.
And now, of course, we are on to Harry IQ. Hello. What's up, Harry? How are you doing today? Very, very good. I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, doing pretty well. It's a, you know, it's a beautiful day, Saturday. I was thinking about doing some Cities and Snap today. What do you think? What's that, sir? Yeah, Cities and Snap. I was thinking about doing that today. Never heard of it. Yeah, we. I'll tell you all about it. It's actually a kind of cool thing. Anyway, so, speaking of that competition, so how do you feel about your competition today? You're up against some pretty stiff competitors across the board. Indeed. To be honest, I'm I'm mostly worried about usually working after he said he's been practicing for two weeks. So, we'll see how that goes. Nice. So, as far as your actual plan goes, uh, you were someone who you jumped right on yeah. it. You were wanting to know the theme ASAP. You were wanting to know the map ASAP. So, were you doing yeah. some preparations? Do you have any special plans for this waterfront shopping center? Or are you just going to be shooting from the hip? Um, yeah, I've done, I've done some preparation. I've done a, I've got more of a plan than last time. Last time I just kind of went in with it, uh, with no practice, but, um, today I feel like a lot more stronger and, um, detailing is my strong side, so it should be a lot easier. I'll today. definitely say it is. You do some great stuff. Now, as far as the yeah. competition itself, this is your second time in the competition, if I'm remembering correctly. Isn't that right? Yeah. Awesome. And the last time you did the... Point. Right, you did the zoos, so you did Zeus yeah. and Step, now this. Now, which one do you think is a bit more up your alley? Do you think you're able to do more something with oh, the zoos one, or the waterfronts? Really? So why would you say waterfronts yeah. are more your specialty over zoos? Uh, well, it's not about the waterfront, really. I'm, I don't, I've done waterfronts more. As I said, um, when I was doing zoos and a snap, I've, I don't really build zoos, and that's not really yeah, my strong side, so I didn't really know what to do for that other bit confused so yeah well there i mean hey it, it happens sometimes people get themes that they aren't as strong in, but you know what that's okay you did absolutely great of course that was a very strong week for competition now as far as this week goes uh do you have any special tricks up your sleeve because you're someone who you do a lot of i guess very intimate little settings anytime you do detailing and i'm just curious are we right. going to see anything in particular this time or is it just going to be more of kind of the usual toolbox uh, I'm kind of going a bit more simple last time because as last time I went for Japan and I think that was also a bit of a weakness for me. So this time I'm just going basic. I'm just going US style, which is what I build in quite a lot of the time. So it's going to be a lot easier for me, but it's going to be a lot more basic. Right. Well, again, that sounds absolutely great. Now, do you have anything, any last no. minute things that we should look out for in your competition today before we let you go? Uh, not at all. No. Awesome. Well, folks, this is twitch.tv slash HarryIQ. Be sure to go check them out. See if they're a detail for you. And Harry, we will look forward to speaking with you around the halfway point. See you later. See ya. And now we are back with everyone. That's why you can see everyone again. So, folks, how do you feel about this week's competition? What do you think about the theme of waterfront shopping? And also, what do you think of details in a snap in general? I think details in a snap is super hype. I'm so glad that you guys are loving details in a snap overall. And, folks, we have now started a giveaway. Wings of V, supplied by King Prox, a Steam key. That's right. Be sure to enter for this lovely giveaway from one of our community members. Be sure to use X mark ticket to win and of course if you win it you can always give it away that's okay we actually want you to give this away this is just the community giving back to you that's all this really is that's all it really is folks and also a few thanks here because a few things just fired out while we were in those interviews uh, thank you, Don Lane, for the gift sub. Thank you, Slim Gaming, once again, for the raiding party. Thank you, 84CJ, for subscribing. Thank you so much. Really does mean a lot. That's great to see. And Sweetsy giving out a gift sub. That is absolutely great. Thank you so much. And Cuboid for the 100 bits. Thank you so very much. And then, of course, thank you, King Prox, for supplying this giveaway for us. It really means a lot. I think deals and staff should not have the same rules as the other ones. Like, city numbers should be relevant. And actually, Mighty L, we're going to be talking about that. So, with the back from last time, and also building on what the participants said, and also sitting there as part of the overhaul that's going to be revealed on Monday morning for the rules going forward for Cities and Snap, Details and Snap now has its own separate rubric. That's right. So now... Details in the sorry, yeah. Details in the snap has its own separate rubric, and the rubric is 
uh, to put it simply, city size and population are still categories, but they are worth half of what they were. That's right. So city size and population, basically irrelevant. It's enough to break a tie, but basically irrelevant for details in the snap. Also, the beautification and detailing now have subcategories. So now you have a macro and micro detailing subcategory. You have a nature and, uh, sorry, nature, urban, and suburban beautification categories within the beautification category. So beautification is now worth three times as much. And then you also have theme beautification and theme detailing. So it's got a lot more categories to it. And we have really focused on all of that for details in the snap. And of course, for details in the snap, we're not even going to look at things like traffic, income, any of that stuff. So that's part of the overhaul that we have been working on for you folks. We have taken your input and that's what's going to be happening for details in the snap as we go forward. There we go. It is details. I should be in details. In, so you think details and snap should be vanilla plus mods only? Uh, what do you, what do you mean by that, Mightyo? You're going to have to be more specific. Special charity stream, Sunday, October 18th. Come cheer on some of your wonderful competitors, Kitty Cloud, YBQ, Little Kaz, and of course, your beautiful, awesome, wonderful, all-time great. Oh, never mind. I'm the fourth one. <laughs> Actually, Don Lane, uh, go ahead and type up a quick little command, and then I can put that into Polyphony so we can just instantly call up charity stream. There we go. Remember, turn to the giveaway. That's right. Is this just for details in the snap? That's right. Just for details in the snap. Just for details in the snap. The main bracket for season snap has other overhauls coming that are also going to benefit people that do beautification and all that. But we're not going to be downplaying the weight of the uh, city size and population. It's just going to be harder to get beautification and detailing points. So if you do more very, you do more beautification in a more varied way, you'll get more points effectively. If you do more detailing in a more varied way, you'll get more points. If you have beautification detailing in your thematic area and in pockets throughout your city, you'll get more points. If you focus on macro and micro detailing, you'll get more points because remember, you can do micro detailing, but not touch macro detailing. You can focus heavily on macro detailing, but leave micro detailing to the side. And there's going to be rough definitions for where all the stuff lies in the rubric. There's a reason why I've been working on this so much over the past few weeks. I'm really working to get it right, get it defined well so that people can know what to look for. There's also going to be an accompanying video that I have already shot that is going to have just little visual examples of this is what micro detailing is by a rough definition this is what macro detailing is by rough definition and i've been helped with all these definitions by a lot of community members a lot of community builders a lot of detailers a lot of viewers just a lot of input has gone into this and i do hope that this is going to really push us forward with the competition there you go jerry can sh show how to detail very effectively on vanilla he really can he absolutely can there you go, and then let's see here, da, 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 da. and then Gareth, mighty oh, I don't agree, the creative use of assets is worth far more than just having it, it's true. There you go. But how is it a level playing field? Maybe Gareth on the same assets. So mighty O, uh, Joey's Coffee Cup won against three heavily modded and asseted players, very fairly, with no bias whatsoever. He won very fairly. And it was both by my vote and chat vote. And I think that alone... And he did it on vanilla console, so it is actually entirely possible. Because keep in mind, you can have great assets but not know how to use them. Because, for instance, one thing that I talk about in my personal stream a lot is I talk about people with their uh, bridges. Because a lot of people download big static bridge assets from the workshop, and they just plop them into their city. And 90% of the time, the static bridge assets don't look good because... Yeah, it's a big, beautiful asset, but it's not used well. And you have to keep that in mind, because if you have something like that, that's actually going to detract points rather than add points. And that's something that a lot of people do, at least in my observations. There you go. Don't forget the macro detailing. Also, lots of assets equals crash. Exactly. You're adding more and more risk. Battle Team 2, Kyle console can't touch PC in this category. Uh... For details in a snap, I would agree, Joey. I think, now, I would invite a detailer to come participate in detailers, in, or sorry, I would invite a console player to participate 
in details and snap. However, I can't recommend that because that because that is a situation where I think console players are at a fundamental lack of ability for details in snap. Now we could run a console detailers in snap if we really could, but at this point we still need to fill out a console bracket before we can even think about doing a detailers bracket. There we go. Does that all make sense? Very much. Slow little test. 10k assets. Risk crash. It does risk crash. Uh, the biggest thing is patience if you have that much. And then also making sure that you're not downloading really high res assets that you're going to use a lot in your city. If you're going to get a couple of really big assets that you're going to place once or twice, that's fine. But don't get like a super high res picnic table or an ultra high res car that you're going to see everywhere in your city. Because at that point, you're going to run into trouble. There we go. I think deals on staff is a good opportunity to showcase assets that are in the workshop. Exactly. Because you also have to keep in mind, that's a whole other part of the community. The detailers, the asset devs, the mod devs. These people do a lot of work, and that's part of what this is. This isn't just a showcase of people's ability to build or my ability to freak out over cool stuff. But it's also an opportunity for awesome maps to be showcased. Awesome assets. Because... These people are seriously talented. I mean, look at that bush, for instance, that Harry IQ is placing here. It is legendary. The fact that little shrubberies like this exist in the game, someone made these textures. And using them correctly is so essential. Whereas if you were to take a giant, beautiful, snow-covered tree as an example of an asset and place it right there, that really wouldn't work right there. I, I wouldn't reward him any points. I'd probably disregard the whole parking lot and be like, nope, parking lot stinks. So, again... I, I do see the critique of, hey, maybe we should limit assets and all that. But for now, we're not going to. We do have some limitations as far as mod usage, though. And one important thing being added starting in October is no PO imports, whether for models or textures. Absolutely no PO imports. I've been showing some very, we'll just say, cheaty things you can do with that. And also... All mods and assets must be publicly available on the workshop 48 hours before the start of the competition. That is another change we are making. So you can't sit there and commission a bunch of custom assets and then have them release like the day of the competition. You're on the only one who has them. And there's something that's beyond perfect for the thing. It has to be stuff that's publicly available starting 48 hours before. That is a hard and fast rule. I know that that does alter some people's plans going forward, but that is a rule that we're instating because we feel it's best for the integrity of the competition going forward. I believe I was thinking of using private assets for an advantage. I know, right? There we go. And thank you for the follow there, Donald7819. Hope you're doing well. Good rules. Yep. There we go. I mean, oh, good. Exploits are bad. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Move It here with all of your exploits. You are, in fact, you are the, you're the reason why we started adding a bunch of addendums with your import feature. Oh my goodness. The move it import feature. I was shown some big abuses with that. There we go. Toaster incinerator. Yeah, to, to, toaster incinerator. And exactly, and actually, Vivify's Godzilla is a great example. So, just having that in his city... It wasn't an avalanche for him to win because he had, oh, he has Godzilla in his city. So hilarious. It was still a close matchup. He happened to win, I think, because of the Godzilla. But I think if he would have lost another, if I, I had to look back, but if he would have lost a point or two in another category, it wouldn't have been enough to carry him over. And that's why we have all these different categories to make sure that someone can't sit there and say, oh, I have this beautiful asset. That's an exact one one recreation of the Chrysler building. Like... That's cool, but, like, that, there's not a city. Here we go. Grandpa, I haven't commissioned any, but I have a set to unreleased assets from creator friends. Exactly. Hey, I suggested that rule. It's true, you did. Let's see here. Wanted to use his own private build of his own mod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's commissioning assets for CIS? Uh, there's actually a couple of people that have done that. There's a couple people that have done that, and it hasn't been done to a... Hasn't been done to such a position where it caused there to be a disadvantage the day of the competition. But it has been done enough that I think the possibility is now there for someone to come in and have custom assets just win the competition. So that's why I'm putting the rule in now so that we don't have to deal with that down the road and 
have someone, I guess, wrongfully win the competition by having access to all the custom assets, basically. Hi, Kazrin. What's up, Tom? Hope you're doing well. What's the Eclipse Chris path? The Eclipse Chris is working with, it looks like, just the wide pedestrian paths. I could be wrong about that, but it looks like the wide pedestrian paths from... Uh, I want to say those are the ones from Network Extensions, maybe? No, it's not from Network Extensions. No, he's using a different one. If anyone knows the one he's using, feel free to shout, but I'm pretty sure Network Skin... Not Network Skins. Network Extensions 2 has a version of that. You want know to tell me if I, I have the other four? It's Pirate Turtle 13, Kashim. Oh, it's Pirate Turtle 13. My bad. <laughs> there we go. Eclipse Chris. Sorry, I'm used to him being slot number one from last week. But yeah, the one he's using right here, this is the UK Rhodes assets. He uses these a lot in his cities. There we go. I miss downhill go-karting. What? Remember, we're here for the community. Have a Justin wants to help out. Join our Discord. Meet up at the competition. We'd love to have you. Exactly, folks. And that's actually a really important thing to keep in mind. A lot of stuff gets done in that after snap talk. Yeah, it's a lot of us messing around, but that's actually where we do a lot of the planning for the event. That's where we get the most raw feedback. So if you have feedback, hop in the Discord, chat with me. You can send me a private message. If you want to have a voice conversation, we can always do that. That's not a problem at all. Uh, you just have to hit me up, and whenever I get the time, we will do it. And I will always make time for this stuff. Because I am very passionate, as you know, about this competition. And it needs all the input it can get. The problem is those assets are very CPU intensive. They are. There are quite a new patent network released a few days ago. So how new are we talking? There we go. Wrong OBS thing. It was, yeah. Link, please, to that. Downhill go-karting, where you take a cable car up a mountain and then sit in go-karts and race downhill. That sounds absolutely frightening. Absolutely frightening. There we go. And what do you mean wrong OBS scene, Jay the Builder? I'm not in the wrong OBS scene. I'm in just the OBS scene I want to be. There we go. New path network. Bingo! Downhill go-karting. Well, what if I make an asset that looks awesome for current CS topic, but is designed to crash game and tell I will theoretically use it? So everyone downloads it and I win because everyone else's game is broken. I mean, yeah, that I, I don't think that would win just me, because honestly, if that happened and I found out someone did that, they'd be barred from the competition permanently. But I can't imagine that anyone in this community would do that. There we go. All right, Kitty Claw, Kirk Giveaway, Wings of V. And folks, we've got about 30 minutes until we have this first giveaway closing. And also until we drop into the first round of interviews, or sorry, second round of interviews. It's going to be super hype. Oh, and also, folks, there are some overhauls happening on the Season Snap website as well. We are actually starting to uh, put together a collection, and we'll be releasing a lot of these website updates in a couple weeks, but I just want to make you aware we're going to be having a line-by-line -line system where you can actually look back at the past winners, and I'm even going to be trying to contact people from now on to get their mod and asset list if they have them at the time and publish that next to it so you can see okay eclipse chris won with these assets or hey you know joey's coffee cup won on console this week and then he lost against this person you can sit there and keep track yourself because this is data i have on the back end but i'm trying to make it in a nice human readable format so that you guys can also keep track of the history of the competition there we go I love a good marina. i spy boats with usually working i kind of spied that too now i'm wondering because he said that he's doing something more Formula 1-S with racing along the waterfront and all that uh, from Morocco. But I'm curious if he has time for a marina. I really am. Now, I think he can probably do it. But I don't know if he can do that and a convincing Formula 1 racetrack in the same spot. So, again, I think he's got his work cut out for him. I think if anyone could do it, he can. But, again, he's going to be really pressed for that time, I think. There we go. Universal Studios something. Hey, do you know we're on YouTube? That's right, we're on YouTube. Monaco. That's right. Monaco, the builder. That's true. Monaco, Casmo. Oh, Mor Monaco, not Morocco. That's why I meant. Sorry. Monaco, not Morocco. Monaco. Why did I say Morocco? Oh, I know why. It's because I invaded them last night. I, I'm doing a playthrough on Europa Universalis as Granada. I'm trying to do the re-reconquista thing, and I just uh, overtook Morocco. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that's why Morocco is on my mind. <laughs> uh, durr, those hustles are usually working are so nice. They really are, and they really fit that vibe that he's going for. Let's go ahead and check that out. Because, honestly, it does have a very nice 
kind of Mediterranean look to it is what I would say. But the more important thing is it's nice and dense. And he's going for just all the density here. And you can see he's just plopping things in. He's slamming them together. And I think that is absolutely the way to go about this. Because you don't really have time to sit there and position the buildings just perfect. And this is actually a good example of macro detailing. He's making sure he selects the right things. But he's not positioning them exactly right. So it's a good wide brush stroke approach to detailing. Casimus asset shopping is not the bingo card. Oh no! I think collections of these homes just went online. It went online yesterday, just me. There's a reason that the center square on the bingo is what it is. Exactly. Exactly. I know, right? Yep. Oh, every house counts as a park or something. That generates happiness? Maybe. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look at the asset in particular. I was only in Moroccan style last week. Did you? Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> that was part of your build. I don't know why I've almost forgotten about last week because this week I have worked non-stop. Oh my goodness. This week has been a roller coaster. But you know what? It's perfectly fine. I love doing it. It's absolutely great and it's always a good time. And it's always worth it to make sure we can have a perfect and beautiful Cities in a Snap event. That's right. And then also, quick reminder, remember that we are having a couple of, for followers of the channel, uh, we are having a brief ad break. After the building stops, we're not having any ad breaks during the build phase, but as soon as the building stops, there will be a quick ad. I've just been reminded to talk about that for a moment from one of my moderators. We are running a quick ad when we do that because uh, Twitch is clear. They want to start running more ads, and honestly, that's a quick time that the participants use to kind of collect themselves anyways. So we're on a really quick ad. Please stick around during that minute so that you can support the channel. It really means a lot because this actually takes a lot of manpower to make happen. There we go. Howdy all looks like usually working has the Monaco Casino down. Yes, he does. And how are you doing there, Kiki? Hope you're doing fantabulistic. There we go. Ba -da -da. There we go. And that is a weird commercial, I guess. Oh, Kitty Claude refreshed it. <laughs> Don't spill cash him. Oh, really, Don? Really? Oh, my goodness. I've cleaned off a good chunk of my desk, Don, so that that doesn't happen again. Oh, my goodness. I was so upset about that. Ah, uh, guys, appearing on Twitch. There we go. There we go. No, only man power, just saying. It's true. Man and woman power! <laughs> and, of course, slave labor from Brainless and Cuboid, because they're still locked in the basement doing my bidding for Cities in a Snap. Speaking of which, we should probably toss down a can of beans for them at some point. Someone has to tease you exactly. Would you like a sippy cup? I have one, thank you very much. It's Darth Vader. See? It's great. It's beautiful. Look at that. It's amazing. I love it. I was so upset with myself. <laughs> Wait, they need food to run? Yeah, on it? Okay, good. Don't let him out this time. I had to refresh the scenes and see froze. Exactly. Yeah, Mighty O, it's something that I give the moderators the ability to do because sometimes when I'm responding to chat or, like, in this case, I'm distracted by something that Eclipse Chris is doing, one of the moderators might notice, hey, Harry Eki's stream froze or it got booted. So that's the moderators just quickly refreshing things so that we can get it right back as soon as possible. Because the way that we have to run this is I actually have to embed each of the streams individually. They're not streaming to me. They're streaming to Twitch and I'm pulling their Twitch streams. So yeah, it's a really janky setup. But hopefully something like Twitch versus, hint, hint, wink, wink, will get us to where we can do this without a problem in the future. Wait, you talked about food. I always talk about food. We need a travel mug. Oh my goodness, we do! Oh my goodness, we need a... Oh, and that's why we need a merch designer, folks! That's right! Because we have all this great idea for merch, but we need someone to design it. Because guess what? We don't have time! So if you are good at designing merch, you want to help out the community, you want to have a very strong say in the products that get pushed forward and the products that don't, then apply for our merchandiser role. It's going to be great. Or merch design sorry merch designer role and uh the application for that is in discord we tweeted it out a couple times we'll probably post it again and tweet it out again today because uh, we really want to get someone on board for that because i think that'd be absolutely legendary and of course we've already got a lot of icons and logos but if, obviously if someone wants to do something custom we could talk about that but for now it's just we've got so many merch ideas and it's oh it's so good i would buy one of those there you go, NSAS whiskey tumbler. Oh my goodness, I would do that in a heartbeat. I'd do that in a heartbeat, Gareth. Can we get that? 
Mercy Designer, seeing out the most gross of peak sessions, they might not be able to do it, but I can recommend someone. There we go. I need a CIS wine glass. I know right. Want, want. I know right. We need a CIS hammer too as a band hammer. Yes! And we need to sit here anytime we have a band happen on Cities and Snap. I can just like bang the uh, gavel, just be like, and band! <laughs> a pen holder. Yeah, I know you want that really badly, Brainless. Unfortunately, I've actually looked into ways that we could source something like that. It turns out it's really hard to source stuff like that, so I'm not sure how possible it is. There we go. Remember, we are always looking for suggestions. Super Chops, Travel Most, new t-shirts. Oh, and someone to help with our merch. That's right, because right now we do have a few basic merch items. You can check out our merch store using the merch command or by using the links below. You can get a t-shirt like this one. Absolutely fabulous. It comes in several different colors, a couple of the different logo designs. We've also got mouse mats, stickers, a few other things. And also, importantly, oh, I don't have it today. The Season Snap Coffee Mug. We have that as well. So if you need to be energized when you're building your cities, get a Season Snap coffee mug there we go hi yeah it's better as a render than the real thing exactly what is the abcdf thing at the top that is i believe that's him working with different gradients of road someone's gonna have to confirm for me because i actually don't use that mod in particular c-shaped mug no it's just a mug with the season snap logo on it. it's absolutely great yeah, I was thinking about them, but Phoenix is going to have her hands full soon, and Goyce has been a little busy with renovations. Well, see, we've already got the logos. Like, we really just need someone to, like, make it happen. Just, like, kind of post the stuff where it goes, and then we can talk about custom designs, things like that. Because right now, we just need the basics. And then we can get an actual art designer later on down the line. There we go. Where are you, Jerry the Builder, and what time is it now? Wish. There we go. Wait, wish? Uh, what are we wishing? Hmm. Oh, I would like to have the event the one hour before so I can participate. Jay the Builder. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is just the time that works because, again, I'm in U.S. Central Time. Uh, this is the time that works best for me. This is the way that I'm able to do it with my schedule, with Cavs Wife. And also, it's the way that we can catch the most amount of people with the most convenient timing. Now, the only things that we miss out a little bit, we miss out on some of the younger Central and Eastern European crowds. We also miss out on uh, some of the Asian areas as well because, yeah, we, we do miss that. We've actually had a lot of people reach out to me and say, hey, why can't you do this at a time more convenient? Because we actually have some people uh, from the East that want to help us out and want to actually participate, but we just there's not really a way for us to do that at this time. Now... If the demand is there, if we continue to grow the event, if we can continue to get support, then we can maybe justify trying to do that. But right now, uh, it's all about just trying to make sure that this event is as rock solid as possible. Here we go. We need to say this, Europe Asia competition. Just me, we actually have the majority of Europeans for the most part. Most participants are European here. And I have no idea why, just our American comrades aren't as willing to participate. There we go. 112 a.m. for me. Yeah, quarter pounder over there. <laughs> Asia, like a plushy sea logo. Oh my goodness, I do it. Could be a dog toy or a kid's toy. Oh my goodness, that'd be great. Oh, that'd be absolutely great. I can do simple stuff. Don't have time for complicated. I will ping you. Yeah, ping me, mooks. Ping me. We can talk about something. We can try to get it done. Because again, we've got lots of awesome ideas. And it's literally just someone taking the time to just, hey, let's make this art look good in this product. Let's get the right color schemes, all of that stuff. And we've got folders and folders of all this artwork, all the different logos that we use. And so it wouldn't be you need to design art. It's literally just you need to learn to implement it onto different bits of things on the Teespring store is what we're going through. Plushy Meteor, anyone? Oh my goodness. Uh, so I've actually looked into that for the Cas Gym channel. Gareth, it's actually really hard to source something like a plushy emote. I have tried very hard. And Cybex with tier one, eight months, eight month streak. Woohoo! There we go. Thank you so much, Cybex, for that support. It really means a lot, your support of this community. Thank you so very much. Our cyborg compatriot, Hyper. That's right. If we can make them small, they would be cute cat toys. They would be. But I can't figure out how to do that. The other thing we're looking into is we're actually looking into a CIAS jersey. I've actually, I'm actually really close to nailing down how I want to do that, but we're actually looking into an eSports style Cities in a Snap jersey. So anyone who participates would get a special code to be able to purchase it for basically no cost 
basically or basically at cost basically so that we wouldn't get any profit but once you participate and win an event then you would get that jersey you know kind of be a way for you to say hey i won season staff and obviously you'd be able to order regardless things like that but we're also looking into potentially making it to where there is kind of a winner exclusive item that you can order should you win so that's something that we are looking into but again this all takes time and obviously we you know i'm busy we've got a lot of moderators that just give me all the time they can but this takes a lot of man hours folks oh what is it kegel i know someone that makes esports jerseys to measure if you like to have the link cash them please send it what's the jersey uh luca I think um uh, gareth just post a picture of a jersey in the discord so that luca can see what you're talking about Kazim, do you want to announce the grudge match theme? Of course I will. Folks, that's right. So I've already announced the brand new thing coming up. That's right. The uh, Cities and Snap Grudge Match Edition. This time will be between Kitty Claude and Cybex. That's right. Kitty Claude and Cybex are participating in the first ever Cities and a Snap Grudge Match Edition. Now, this is going to be a very special event because, again, the way a grudge match works is you can challenge someone else from within the community and should they accept you then come together and you decide on a theme now kitty claw and cybex had a third party to roger decide but in this case what they're doing is i believe it's french quarter new orleans if i remember correctly yeah new orleans french quarter is going to be the theme now grudge matches are one hour during the week at a time predetermined and in this case it's 5 30 p.m u.s chicago time so yeah it's a little late for the european crowd but that's the time that they're both able to do it so we are going to be here live tuesday night and be sure to check out twitter check out the discord for all that stuff it's going to be great and it's going to be 100 percent chat vote that night that's right because since grudge matches are 1v1 not part of the normal bracket it's all chat vote so you have to show up so you can make your voice heard determine who wins and of course see who deserves the title of the victor between kitty claude and cybex there will always be the vod that's true that is morning for the pacific who wants to do left hand traffic grudge match there we go aj i couldn't have a life without kitty or cybex i know right there we go Cody. that's right no you're right i uh, hopefully it's a tie i know right hey pelts that's right hmm now who's gonna challenge toady that's the real question. The Grudge Match of the Century! Kitty Claw vs. Live Extreme C who is the best builder in one-hour competition. Theme for this Tuesday is New Orleans French Quarter. Tune in at 5.30 Chicago time. There we go. No idea what time in the UK. There we go. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get that copy into a quick command. There we go. And there we go. And then also keep in mind, you do have the ability to do this if you want. Don't let this here. Grudge Match. There we go. Boom. And then we'll also go ahead and get that other command that you just posted over to me. So, chat, what do you think of all these new events that we have in this next month? Because, folks, we have lots of awesome, awesome stuff coming up in the month of October. What do we think of October? I think it's looking pretty stacked. What do you guys think? Is it going to be awesome? Is it going to be amazing? I think it will be. There we go. And now you can go ahead and use the charity command. Charity. Charity. There we go. All right. There we go. That is all in. There we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's take a closer look at what each of our participants are doing. All right, I've seen your saber skills. I'll stand a chance in any battle against you. <laughs> it's true, the saber skills are pretty legendary. So, first of all, we've got Pirate Turtle here arranging some fences and trying to get them to act as... This is actually a nice detail. They're actually a railing, it looks like, to... I believe this is going to be a large pedestrian staircase. Yeah, it looks like a large pedestrian staircase. Now, I have to imagine he's going to use procedural objects to pull that siding down a little bit on the brickwork, but we'll have to wait and see. But regardless, that's already a great thing. Because again, a lot of these large waterfront shopping centers, particularly in Europe, will have large pedestrian staircases leading you towards and away from the waterfront. So I think that's a great detail. There we go. 11 a.m. There we go. New events are very cool. They are very cool. There we go. I'm not changing my computer to show much, even if I am the Senate and Lord Sidious. <laughs> there we go. It is 11 a.m. Be sure to check out that merch as advertised by our lovely stream elements. But I should really flip that over to Polyphony at some point. Doesn't do stairs. <laughs> Slim, that's okay. Uh, I don't really do stairs either, mainly because I'm at home all the time these days. Oh my goodness. It's absolutely ridiculous. And let's check out what Chris is up to. So Chris already 
well into the waterfront aspect. Now, I don't see much of the shopping center yet. However, it looks like he might be trying to create some pedestrian stairwells that lead to the center of the city. Maybe he's trying to make it more peninsula-based. Now... A huge inspiration point for me with this was actually the San Antonio Riverwalk. So if you want to look up that, that's actually what gave me the huge inspiration point for this. There you go. I use Google LOL. Maybe. Tony Saber Skills would be a good match for Jedi. Maybe. There you go. Have you ever been to the beach yet, Season Snap? Nope. Never been to the beach. I have never, ever, ever been to the beach. There we go. Not because, well, actually, kind of because I don't want to, but also because I've literally only had two vacations in my life. The first vacation I was ever on was my honeymoon, and the second one was down to San Antonio. There we go. Here, I've seen the ocean. Nope. There we go. Pedestrianism. Hype! You've never been to the beach? Gareth, no, I've, I've had two vacations in my entire life. One was my honeymoon, and then the second one was two years later to San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> like, I have it, Kaznar has. It's true. There we go. That's right, I've never been to the beach. With how close we live, we do a couch co-op grudge match. Yeah, uh, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you probably could. That would actually be kind of funny. Uh, Cass, let's go to the beach, OMG. When will I go? And plus, that's expensive, dude. I've got to buy a graphics card before I do that. Oh, my goodness. Graphics card before beach, guys. Graphics card before beach. Otherwise, season snap will uh, snap out of existence. Can we swap buyers for four days next summer? No, thanks. I've been dragged. I've dragged him on all of them. It's true. Hope you get to one day, Kaz. I will one day, Toadie. I will one day, because I know Kaz's wife wants to go, but again, it's just, it's not an option. There we go. All right, so back to usually working. Actually slowing down, it looks like, which is a shock. With how fast he was moving about 10 minutes ago, this is shocking to see his mouse barely moving. Now, he is working a lot in the procedural objects menu, which is unfortunately a little bit obscured by his camera, but... I'm thinking that he's probably trying to figure out some specific options to be able to use that piece of pavement that he's got elevated right now. And I have to imagine he's trying to use it maybe to create either an open plaza area, or he might be using it as a ramp to get either to or from the ocean. We'll have to find out. Kaz, never been to the beach? It's true, I never have. So there's an option. Life is your OMG. Hashtag kid not Kaz. Well, wild and again, the USSA is so big. I'm pretty much as far from the beach as I can be in the UK. And it's about seven miles away. You can day trip it. Uh, Kaz, will I figure out how far away from the ocean you and I are? I'm very curious. I know we'd have to drive a whole day to get there. There we go. Wow, that's a weekend trip at a minimum. Yep. How is it only eight hours away, Kaz, wife? Oh, if we... Okay, if we just go to the Gulf. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, minimum of eight hours. There you go. Sherry has catching. Going to the beach is worth it. Okay, you want to tell what the zone anarchy does that i saw in one of the streams so uh mighty O, oh, what zone anarchy does is it makes it to where you can say okay i want no zoning on this road so basically whenever you zone it it won't have any zoning squares or you can even say okay i want this to only go too deep on zoning or i want there to be zoning on one side not the other etc etc you can also manipulate some versions of it and this might still be an experimental build it might be in the release i don't know but i know that there's a version out there now where you can actually say okay you're only going to make four by four slots and you're going to separate them by just enough so it's a very powerful tool and it's a great way to do macro dealing in a very detailing in a very quick manner to make sure that you have a uniform size of house now it's not very widely used because a lot of people like get to that point to start downloading their own assets and plopping them in. But Zone Anarchy is very powerful mod for that stuff. Gas is only around two gallon here. It's true. Driving would be cheaper. There we go. Downloading Zone Anarchy now. Yeah, it's a great, great tool. You can fly. Mooks, yeah, flying would be expensive. It'd be like well over a thousand dollars for us to fly to the beach. There we go. All right, Toady will get it, unzone everything, and give save to her co-op friends. There we go. <laughs> That'd be really funny, Mooks. I'd actually pay to see that. I'd, I'd pay to see that. I think that's absolutely hilarious. Dog Kappa. Oh, my goodness. Don Lane's just posting all of these things. A, oh, my goodness. A dog bowl. That'd be great. Or a cat bowl. I would suggest the train, but I guess you don't have size to be real there. Nope. We don't have rails. There we go. Gas is $2 a liter here. There you go. Driving eight hours is nothing really. Kitty Claude, yes it is. Keep in mind, I complain if I have to drive 20 minutes. I, I don't like driving. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. There we go. All right, a gallon is six euros over here. Yeah, but we're also on top of all the dead dinosaurs because Kazwife and I live in Oklahoma, and there's a lot of dead dinosaurs under our feet. So yeah, we just, 
We keep sucking up the dead dinosaurs and turning them into beautiful, precious fuel, and it's great. It's actually what, like, half of our state's economy is built off of right now. There we go. If I was flying in America, I would have given Kaz and Kaz our free flight tickets. Yay! It was waiting here no longer. Oh, it was down to, like, 120 about a year ago. Do you remember that, Kaz's wife? About a year ago, it was down to about 120. It was absolutely maddening. And then at the beginning of uh, the COVID stuff, it actually got down to... $1.11 is the cheapest I saw in town because they're just trying to sell the gas because it was just causing problems having all of it lying around. We're also on top of all the dead dinosaurs. We are, Toady! <laughs> we are! Like, yeah, I kid you not, Toady. Look up the Oklahoma State Capitol. It is actually on an active oil field and in the lawn in front of the State Capitol, there's an active oil well. I kid you not. It's actually really, really cool. And nearly anywhere you drive, uh, you drive a mile just about any direction, you'll see an oil pump somewhere, either private or publicly owned. It's absolutely fabulous. There we go. In America, we do a lot of driving to get places. I've taken several vacations with one day driving there. Exactly. I'll drive 18 hours to get to Florida. Eight hours is nothing. <laughs> what Kaz is missing is more gas taxes, like $4 a gallon worth. We actually do have significant gas taxes uh, here. It's just... The price of gas for us is so cheap here in Oklahoma. It's, it's irrelevant. It's still cheaper than everywhere else. There we go. I know the place where they refine rotten dinosaurs. <laughs> and I was okay. Is there? Yeah, guys, are for somewhere. About 12 hours to get out of Ontario if we're going west. Gotcha. And including tax fuel is about 548 US. Oh, wow. That's absolutely maddening. There we go. Lol, yeah, guys, eight hours gets me to Italy. <laughs> Tommy. Oh, you can go down and see Night Morphus then. Why don't you go down and visit Night Morphus and pick up Burning on the way? It'll be absolutely great. Wow, that was out to New England area town lane. There we go. Yeah, no, she's uh, East Coast. There we go. And it's cheaper than it has been. It is cheaper than it has been across the board. And it's because a lot of the oil wells have been strained due to all the excess that's not being used due to world events that are happening. But speaking of events that are happening, folks... We're about to close our first giveaway of the day. In fact, we'll be closing in about 20 seconds, folks. That's right. You've got less than 20 seconds to enter this giveaway right just now that Katie Claw posted a while back. Be sure to use exclamation mark ticket to enter if you haven't already. This is a giveaway, again, given to us by King Prox. There we go. Miss Iris, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. There we go. The giveaway should be ending here momentarily, and let's close it, Kitty Claude, as soon as you hear this. Let's close that up. Let's close up that giveaway, and then we'll start the next one. Let's see who wins this giveaway. And the giveaway has been won by Brainless Society. Can we get some hype and chat for Brainless winning the game? Congratulations. And, of course, Kitty Claude is going to fire up another giveaway. That's right, another giveaway, because we love you all so much. And also, you guys, uh, a lot of people have just been giving us these giveaways to give away, and we are more than happy to give it away to the community, because this is the best community on Twitch. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our midpoint interviews because folks what we're going to do is we're going to chat with each individual for a few minutes each and we're going to ask them what they think about the competition we're going to ask them what kind of detailing they're doing and we're also going to ask them what their plans are for the back half and also a favorite question of mine is are you on pace or not because i've actually found over the past seven months or so of hosting this competition that some people get really behind schedule and then other people end up so far ahead of schedule that they're like yeah i have program for another project but that other category is becoming increasingly lower because it seems that more and more people are starting to try and overstock so that they don't run out of ideas during the event is that dangerous is it not we'll be finding out soon there we go and control how are you doing hope you're doing well can we get some cities dlc giveaway I uh, I don't know if we have any cities DLC being given away today. That is up to what is given to us. And let me go ahead and double check. Uh, let's see here. We have the base game from Cities Door. So not a DLC, but we do have City Skylines base game being given away. Uh, that'll be starting up here shortly as soon as Kitty Claude gets it ro ro rolling. And that's right, folks. This is going to be available for anyone to come by and grab you can also take it give it to a friend give it away on your own stream if you are a streamer it is your choice folks absolutely your choice 
There we go. The base game of Skylines coming up. Nice. Oh, and speaking of Skylines, we need to talk about that mobile game, folks. But before we do that, it is, of course, finally time for our midpoint interviews. And, of course, that means that we're going to be starting off with the one and only Pirate Turtle. What's up, Pirate Turtle? Pirate Turtle. Hello. Yes, just died. Oh, my. Oh, I just died? Did I just die? Uh, Pirate Turtle, can you hear me? Uh, Kaz, I don't know if it's me or you, but it's not coming through right. It's not coming through. Uh, that's not good. Try disconnecting and reconnecting. We'll go ahead and come back to you. All right, so in the meantime, uh, as Pirate Turtle moves on and hopefully gets that fixed, we're going to chat with Eclipse Chris. What's up, Chris? Is there a problem, Kaz? I heard some issues. Ah, uh, yeah, Pirate Turtle can't hear him for some reason. No idea why. I'm willing to his end, considering that you can hear me. And um, my monitors have to be Sorry. I, oh I my God. You're joking. the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to punish you by giving you a reduction of zero points uh, in the competition. And I realize that that's oh, cool. a little extreme. I like it. But you know what? I You've you've earned it. A zero point reduction. That's... that's oh, I'm sorry. It. Anyway, so... Uh, you're about an hour in, so how do you feel you're doing? How are things rolling? Are things going well? Do you feel like maybe you're falling behind, going ahead? Uh, are things uh, falling to plan? Um, currently, I've planned everything that I had currently practiced, and that is it. <laughs> so currently, I'm just winging the rest of this now. Right, so um, just winging the rest yeah, of this. So you do have a good framework down. It is a beautiful yeah, framework. framework. Is there. So, I'm assuming that you're going to be filling it in a little bit, because I see lots of opportunities here for some nice, beautiful pedestrianism. I know Luca's freaking out, because yes. all hell pedestrianism, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you got to have that. Exactly. Um, yeah, don't mind me. Interesting. So, uh, now, moving on. So, you've done a lot oh, so far. So, what is the exact vibe that you're going for here? I can't quite figure out the vibe that you're going for. Um, well, I'm going for just a bit of a standardized sort of chopping center, sort of big complex thing, but I wanted to make it a bit of a rundown sort of thing, I'm guessing, um, from what I'm about to do. If I allow this cooldown to come about again. Right, so... I'm going to be uh, giving a bit of flood. I mean, you're just doing that for funds at this point, I know. So, as far as the actual build itself, so you've yeah. used a lot of great new road assets. People are talking about the UK roads that you're using, which yes, are UK absolutely roads. beautiful. So, who made those roads, out of curiosity, just for folks that may be curious? Because I don't remember who made them. Sparky66. Sparky66, got it. So, folks, that's the name yep. of the person who made those roads that you are just fawning over. I know I am as well. Oh, they're, but, they're loving it. Oh, they're, they're great. I mean, honestly, a good road can make or break a city. Because think about it. Roads permeate the entire city. It's really important to make sure that you get that part right. And I think to that point, though it's not as relevant in details and stuff, but highways in particular, I always tell people, get the right highway for your city, and then the rest will fall into place. Because really, that's the backbone of your city. You get exactly. that, you can get everything else laying in. Just like a good rail is the backbone, too. So you need both of them running parallel to have an absolutely beautiful time. Anyway, so, so... Yeah, so I'm planning to do a bit of a stack going on here. So it's multi-level, I'm trying to do. But whether I'll have the time to do it, who knows? Yeah, and I am seeing that. So, I mean, a lot of us have been getting into the, the stack city thing over the past half a year. Now, is this something that you've done personally before? Or is this something that you're just finally diving into? I'm finally diving into I've never actually tried this before. Um, apart from just in a little bit of testing before. As in today, basically. Right. Well, so I have curiosity. So are you modeling off of anyone else's tiered style? Because there's a lot of different ways to do it. Or are you just trying to go about your own way? I'm I probably have had influence from other people's stuff, but I'm not actually recalling on it. I'm just sort of going with what I'm sort of thinking of, really. Well, hey, and that's the best way mm. to do it. Now, uh, the final bit before I let you go... So, you've got less than an hour left, so do you think you'll be able to finish your grand vision, or do you think mm. it might fall flat? <laughs> the ultimate uh, question. Well, it might fall flat, you know, so we'll find out. If I can finally get flooring done. Gotcha. 
well hey i'm gonna look forward to that i think it's gonna be great i think you're doing great and of course we're going to be checking in with you during the end interviews uh, i can't wait to see what you get done it's looking beautiful here's hoping that it all comes together great. in the last hour me too me too <laughs> all right and folks again this is for your consideration twitch.tv slash eclipse chris and of course that brings us to usually working what's up oh. usually oh it's me yes hi how are you uh you I'm know it's, it's that time uh so, you know, a little over halfway through. So, how are we feeling? Is the competition starting to get to you? Or do you feel like you've got enough time? What's going on? Oh, no. I think, uh, well, you know, I don't think anyone ever is going to say I have enough time for a details in the snap. But uh, I think I'm, uh, I am currently in a very good position right now. I have the, the main framework down, uh, which I, I expected to take a lot longer. But luckily, I'm able to do it uh, very quickly. Uh, and then once we get the power and water on, we should start seeing some progress and everything left. And then it's literally down to the uh, just the details of all the storefronts and waterfronts and everything like that. And then along with making the Formula One track that is going to end up uh, weaving in around uh, all past these super awesome places that uh, Monaco is known for. Nice. That is absolutely stellar. Uh, and I love that. And actually, so it's funny because like you and I had just finished talking about this Monaco build, how I'm familiar with it from a few movies that I've used the same type of setting lately in the past decade or two. And whenever I start talking about chat, I started saying Morocco because <laughs> Morocco is on my mind from something I was doing last night in European Universalis 4. So that was funny, a funny little flub up. But as far as the actual Monaco thing, so what inspired you to want to do this in the Monaco style? I wanted to ask you about that. Um, so YouTube, uh, Pug Gaming did a very excellent Monaco build, and the, I watched the entire series uh, probably about, well, during uh, during the lockdown, and as soon as I heard a Waterfront, uh, the one thing I love to do is watch Formula 1. I like, I like to follow the, the Formula 1 championship. Uh, so the first thing I thought is, oh, not only I know the perfect place that has the most recognizable waterfront, that is stores and shopping and all that stuff, but also uh, has a Formula One. And I wanted to use the mod because, uh, of course, there is a very special mod that is available in the workshop that has all the assets done by Ronix. Uh, and they're absolutely cool. And so we're going to set up a Formula One track in here, too. Um, so I, I, both my scratches, I, I want to, I just want to go to Monaco. Who doesn't want to go to Monaco? That's, that's really what happens and I can't go. Uh, so I'm just all sad now because I can't go to Monaco, but at the same time, uh, it's, it's just such a fun build. It's incredibly difficult, but it's so much fun. I definitely agree. And I think this is absolutely great. Now, a lot of people have mentioned the fact that, oh yeah, Marino's boats, he's going into that. Now. You're also going for the Formula One thing. You're adding in the marina. I mean, at this point, I'm expecting to see horse racing at this point. Like, what else can you fit in this area? <laughs> I, I don't like horse racing. I, well, technically, I'm building a casino, but it's already pre-built. But uh, So I guess gambling. You forgot gambling. Gambling can be added. Oh, well, there. there you go. Yeah, I marked yeah. out for bingo cart. No, it's kidding. That's not yeah. on bingo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could you imagine if it was? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Anyway, so a... uh, final thing here. So with... 50 some minutes remaining uh would you say that the final hour is more crunch on details in the snap or cities in the snap i think um i don't know how other people play uh because i just know how i play um i kind of do a little bit of everything along the way with it uh it's not necessarily like a uh ooh, that was a huge asset sorry uh it's not necessarily a i'm gonna figure out how to complete the city um, I like to get a baseline down, just get a population going, get the services going, uh, just to make the the people happy per se. And then after that, uh, it'll be a continuation of just kind of, I think it's details mainly, um, right. but I detail along the way. So I, I have a plan in my head and I set everything up in the future, knowing that I was going to use the, the chicane on the 12th turn in order to have uh, some food stalls on it. So I knew that in my head previously. Uh, and this would be the chicane is here and this will be the 12th turn of the of the track and it comes down the main speedway past the pool uh, and right. so i now, think about it ahead of time so i'll put the pool down first knowing that i'll build around it in the future even though it is completely undecorated right now right so one final thing here are you actually going to have cars racing on it like yes. i have to know yes. oh you are oh 100 
Yep. Do you I'm care to divulge you. how you're going to do that, or? So yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is a mod uh, done by Ronix that has Formula One cars, and what they act is is it acts as a bus. And so if I clear the roads of normal street cars and block them off except for bus traffic, and then transfer a bus line into a Formula One line, and then remove using uh, using the, um, uh, what's it called, uh, TMPE, if you remove the speed limits and put no limit, then the Formula One cars will go through whatever track you set as the bus line as fast as possible. And it looks like uh, it looks like a bunch of Formula One racers are racing through this small town. That's what it's going to be. Nice. Well, that sounds absolutely legendary. I think this is going to be great. And again, those new assets from Ronix, I suspected that's what you were using. But again, it's it was all just, you know, kind of trying to make sure. Because obviously a lot of asset developers sometimes come up with their own versions of things. Something shortly after you see something similar so i just wanted to make sure yeah it's an absolutely legendary set of assets and i can't wait to see this used i think it's going to be great it's probably uh hopefully it just blows us all away i love the idea but in the meantime uh we'll be chatting with you at the end interviews yeah sure i'll talk to you guys later awesome peace out friend and now we're on to harry iq right. what's up harry hello so with more than half your time elapsed about 51 minutes remaining uh how are we feeling on the timing of this, do we feel like it's working out? Do you feel like maybe not quite enough time? Uh, how are things shaping up on the waterfront aspect? Of course it's not enough time. <laughs> yeah, Never it's actually, time. Um, yeah, um, well, I had a plan, and um, I feel like I'm kind of ahead of plan, but I said that last time, but I didn't actually have a plan, so I lied to you. Okay, so you lied to me. Right. Good. So Harry is a liar. Confirmed, folks. I'm never going to drop that, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so how's the actual waterfront going? Uh, do you feel like you've got, I guess, the core of what you need down? Do you feel like maybe it might be lacking in an area, or are you just working on a firm foundation before you well, move along? Well, I'm kind of lacking in the theme, because I knew waterfront, I wasn't really going to go do good in the theme. I think the shopping center is fine, but waterfront, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that, really. So, um, and I've got the foundations down pretty much of, like, the little town and stuff probably expand this and stuff yeah nice well and that's good leaning into your strengths first and then adapting the theme that's actually perfectly valid for whenever you're unsure about the theme and that's probably the best way to make sure that you retain yeah. as many of the points as possible now is that something that you came to the competition knowing that you're going to do or is that kind of a last minute decision of like you know what i really am not comfortable with the theme so i'm just going to lean into strengths and then do the theme yeah i feel, I feel comfortable with the theme i guess yeah, but I want to do this, uh, I guess, yeah, like the easy parts last. I don't really know. Fair enough. That's more than fair enough. Well, <laughs> best of luck, obviously. It's looking good. We love what you're doing. And, of course, you're doing great. And, of course, we've got about 49 minutes left. Mm -hmm. So we'll be chatting with you in the end interviews. Best of luck, my friend. Have a good day. All right. And now let's try this again. Pirate Turtle, get, do your review. <laughs> Oh, good. We can read each other. That's great. So, how are things working blame on your stream? <laughs> Sorry, blame Africa. Oh, obviously. I mean, that's really all I ever do. So, uh, yeah, yeah. are things going pretty well? Do you feel like you're on pace? Do you feel like things are maybe falling a little behind? What's the story there? Uh, probably about 10 minutes behind, but it's fine. I'll make mm -hmm. it up. That's not good. So why about to miss a hind? Do you feel like maybe you just overstocked what you think you're able to do? Or is it more a situation of just things have come up that you did? There we go. Okay. All right. We should be back. All right. All right. We should be back. I can't see anything now, though, because I'm flying blind as far as chat, folks, because I can't see chat. I've just disabled the other monitor. This is actually a problem that's been happening. Uh, due to the lack of <laughs> graphics power at this point. My graphics card is failing, basically. There we go. Uh, someone let Quarter Pounder know that I'll be back in as soon as I can get Discord back online. There we go. And I do apologize for that, folks. Uh, it's out of my control. Uh, just failing graphics card. <laughs> there we go. Let's see if we can pull this all together. All right, there we go. All right, whip round for new cast, maybe. There we go. Poor Kaz. I know. I'm trying, Toady. I'm trying. Uh, okay, I can see chat again. I've got it on the side of my screen, so hopefully that'll work. 
Okay. I can see you guys in the polyphony terminal right now. So yeah, I might be a little slow to respond to chat, unfortunately. Okay, we should be good though. I'm hopefully getting back into Discord. Back online. There we go. Oh, what a shame. Hot to three. Sorry, Castle. <laughs> Sweet tea, I can't afford it. I can't even afford a graphics card replacement right now. So, yeah, that's why we're using the failing graphics card. If I could replace it, I would have replaced it a week ago. There we go. We were for a ton of IPO of ways to support CIS. <laughs> yeah. If you want the event to continue without supporting, it's a good idea in this case. All right. And I think we're back. Pirate Turtle, are you there? Okay, sweet. Sorry about that. Failing graphics card. We're back. Okay. So, with that chaos out of the way, how are you feeling? What do you think about the competition? And also, what do you think about the theme? Right, but again, the two hours thing it presses you. You learn new techniques, right? Okay, sorry, folks. You should be able to hear him now. Sorry about that, folks. That's from the crash. Oh. There you go. They can hear you now. Cast dip. Cast dip. Did someone cast dip? Someone cast dip. Don't dirt me from my failing graphics card. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, uh, what, you yeah, want to repeat that last so little bit I'd... for us? <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so I was just saying, I, I think. It would be interesting to see more from the detailers, you know, like what we can really do rather than being pressed for time. Right, and we've actually uh, talked about that a little bit. It's not sold yet, but we're thinking about doing something in regards to that. I won't go into details now, but we can always talk later about that because, again, it's something that obviously details in Snap is great. But people have been talking about what about long form details things, and obviously that doesn't fit in the in the Snap thing as well, but. We, we've got some stuff that are that I've got my sleeves that I think could work really well for us. Absolutely legendary. But, okay. uh, also, on top of that, so, as far as the theme goes, you seem to be starting to lean into it more as you go. You've got a lot of pedestrianism going. You've got kind of a sunken down area down there. So, do you have any particular inspiration points that you're using to push forward whenever you're trying to do this build? So, I had something in mind and the more i was sitting with it um the more i was like it's just too sort of generic right. and then um while i was doing like sort of a brainstorm storming session like like something just came and i was like this is what i want to do this is this is the the out of the box the something that you can't do in vanilla like i said earlier right so now something else that you've uh, started really doing, and I actually really do appreciate seeing it, is you're starting to focus a little bit on the density of it. Because obviously a lot of people think of kind of, I guess, the modern big box shopping store, anything of software stores. You think of things like, okay, you've got your big Best Buy, your big Walmart, your big Big Bath, thing, you know, thing like that. But a lot of these shopping centers, particularly the waterfront ones, particularly in Europe, things like that, it's a lot of smaller shops that are closer together. And I really do appreciate that you're leaning into that. Was that an intentional focus of yours to try and make it a more, I guess, intimate shopping center? Or is it more just you haven't gotten to do the big box stores yet, or are you just avoiding big box entirely? So coming from South Africa, we don't we don't really have those. Um, so it's just sort of normal for me to, to do it this way. Um, we do have like some like wholesaler type stores, but that's about it. So generally, this is this is our, our malls, our shopping centers. They they look like this. It's it's no big box stores like you you said. Awesome. Well, hey, that's always a good way to do it. And so one final thing before I let you go. So as far as details in the snap, do you think you'll actually be able to complete details in the snap? Do you feel like you'll be able to finish your vision to one form or another? Or do yes, you think yes. this is going to be something that we'll see a nearly finished product? No, no, I'm definitely finishing. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see it, folks. Again, uh, this is Twitch.tv slash PirateTurtle13. Be sure to check him out and see what you think of his builds. And we'll be back with you later, friend. Thanks, man. All right. And now, no, 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 we are back, folks. So, 
Again, I do apologize for that. I will go ahead and do a brief explainer. Uh, there was a brief crash there. Uh, that is due to a failing graphics card. I do apologize. There's not much I can do about it, unfortunately. Uh, it's just, it's an issue that's been happening. Uh, I've known that it's failing. I'm trying to do what I can, but there's only so much that we can do. And Season Snap does tax it a lot because of embedding all the streams and encoding all of them live. So I do apologize for that inconvenience. Uh, I'm trying to do what I can to make sure that the event can continue. And I do appreciate you showing patience for that. It really does mean a lot. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see here. And someone asked what a big box store was. There we go. Okay, so a big box store is something where you have... A lot of think of like a big warehouse or something like big box like something that you would go and get a large item from so like you would get a big TV from a big box store you get a couch or a bookshelf at a big box store because it's a large item but as far as more intimate shops is things like you know you can get things like you know the biggest thing you can get is maybe this and big box stores also things where you can get things more in bulk at a discount things like that so things like Sam's Club Walmart, Best Buy, if you think of things like that, that's more big box. So Walmart is more in between. So if you go to one of the neighborhood markets, it's not really big box. But if you go to a super center, it is more big box, at least in my opinion. There we go. What about Kaz's GPU? Mighty O! There we go. Get that graphics card. <laughs> I'll do my best, Mighty O. I'm doing my best. Uh, we just, I'm not, I'm not in the position to do it yet. I'm doing my absolute darndest, though. Thank you, Mighty O, for the sub, though. High five. Really does mean a lot. There we go. Cast the GPO to store this old big boxes. You know, I actually used to think that Ignis whenever I was little. <laughs> when I was little, that was definitely a thought process. There we go. Get good. Cast GPU. Yeah, it's trying, Ignis. It's just taxed. It's the poor thing's been beaten to a pulp over the past many years. There we go. All right. And it's usually a chain store as well. Usually a chain store. Yeah, there are big box uh, just standalone stores, but those aren't very common. Not very common at all. Not too nicely decorated inside and everything comes in cases of 48. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. Something like a JTF or a cash and carry. I don't know what JTF or cash and carry are, but maybe. Maybe. Absolutely maybe. So there's our plan. Big box is deemed out of center retails. It's set outside metropolitan center and can be detrimental to small format retail in said center. Unless the big box retail is inside the center itself and it feeds back into the center. Yes. That's actually a good explanation, Palpatine. It almost sounds textbook. I just don't know these American ones you mentioned. Yeah, probably not. There you go. Loads of Costco. and Yeah, Costco is one. Costco is definitely one. And actually, we're gonna, so it's actually something that I try to do in my personal cities builds. I try to make it so that we have a combination of kind of the big box retail on the outskirts and then the more intimate shopping on the inner works and i think that's actually a really neat thing because you have to have that dichotomy because obviously you gotta have the downtown shopping you gotta have the old shopping center you've also got to have the big box shopping because again all three of them perform a separate and very vital function for any large urban center there goes three opinions on maybe there we go cash and carriers membership base bulk food retail pay cash you're responsible for carrying it out no delivery uh, it's kind of like Sam's Club for us, Palpatine, except we can pay with whatever we want, but it sounds kind of like Sam's Club. They can be, or are your Aldi's different doors? Our Aldi's are small discount supermarkets. Our Aldi's here have kind of a bad name for basically having a lot of the stuff that is about to go bad. And now that's only in the fresh stuff. When it comes to things like, you know, your crackers, your cereals, things like that, yeah, absolutely fine. But around here, at least, the Aldi's, uh, they do seem to have a lot of like the, oh yeah, this lettuce is good if you chop it up on the way home type thing, is kind of the joke around here. Let's get in your graphics card fun going. <laughs> Thank you, Grandpa. It really means a lot. High five. Every bit counts, because again, a direct replacement for this card is more than I can afford. And it's only a, it's only a 1080 that I've gotten here, or sorry, a 1070 rather. Uh, obviously, I was dreaming of upgrading someday, but at this point, it's just, I gotta do a flat replacement. So I won't be able to get a real upgrade for, like, a decade at this point. <laughs> oh, there you go. It was textbook cash, and it was from our playing documents that I helped write. Nice! All is a supermarket over here. I think it depends where it is. Thank you, though, Grandpa. Really means a lot. Although, of all the other fresh stuff in UK is better than the more expensive supermarket. 
Right, and again, it's I have noticed that there's apparently a huge difference between the UK and Euro uh, European based Aldi's and then the United States based Aldi's. Those Aldi's do seem to be the ones that struggle more. And even then, it seems to be more regionally locked. So like in my area in Oklahoma and then in southern Missouri, uh, they seem to they seem to be kind of in that, yeah, it's really dodgy. Don't get anything other than like crackers or something like that there. But in other places, I know, like, for instance, St. Louis and even parts of eastern Texas, where it's like a really good store. It's like, yeah, this is where I get all my fruit from type thing. And so I think it is just based on what's in the area. Now you have to keep in mind, here in Oklahoma, we have a huge chain of natural grocers uh, called, uh, or organic grocers called uh, Sprouts. And it's actually a great grocery chain. So I have a feeling that they take up a lot of that supply of fresh food, fruits and veggies and all that. And then as a result, all these might get kind of the runoff of that, if that makes sense. I think that's the way it was explained to me. There you go. Chris seems to be moving escalators. Can people use them? Uh, if he... Now, by default, no. But there are definitely ways to fake it. But to my knowledge, there is not a way to get pedestrians to ride those escalators. If he has a way for that to happen, I'm all for it. But I don't think any of our mod does have figured that out yet. Uh, maybe I should try and get Keyboid to do that. You guys think if I throw him a bag of peanuts or something, he'll do that? I mean, he's down in the basement. I might as well try, right? <laughs> there go. Invisible path networks for the win. Invisible path networks, yeah, but you'd still be, like, walking through it. And I'd rather have the pedestrians step up to the escalator and then just ride the escalator up. But that might be too much to ask. Will the clear wall pass works? They, no, they would work, but they wouldn't do it the way I want. Like, I'd want them to stop walking. But p the invisible pass would be a good patchwork solution to it. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing well, Carl Lover? Recovering from a little GPU crash, but uh, hopefully doing well other than that. <laughs> yes, rat trays. Rat trays, indeed. And, folks, we got about 34 minutes left in cities in a snap. Let's get this rolling, folks. It's going to be legendary. We're coming in on the last 30 minutes, folks. Coming on the last 30 minutes. So let's get the hype roll, roll, rolling. Get it rolling, folks. This is going to be legendary. The second ever details in the snap entering its final phase of building. It's going to be absolutely great. And you can go to the London Underground. Everyone walks on the escalators there. <laughs> It's like that here in the United States, too, but I still think that for the escalator to actually function as an escalator would be better, and I think it would be really, really great. But again, that's just pipe dreams, honestly. Absolutely pipe dreams. But I am really hoping that we see something here from Eclipse Chris on that upper tier, because I think if he gets the upper tier going, then this build is going to be legendary. But if he doesn't quite do it, then he's possibly going to lose some points. So at that point, it's going to be a lot of empty space. Because keep in mind, I'm actually looking to make sure that they have activity in here. I'm looking to see, if, do they have activity? Do they have pedestrians walking through? Do they have people actually walking through there looking like they're using it? Or does it look like a ghost town? Because if it looks like a ghost town, that's just not fun. No one wants that. Went to a drift Wednesday and got back home at 10 to 8. Nice, car lover. I hope you enjoyed it. Once we're the stream, we take follow subs, bits, tips, merch, Patreon, giveaways, and friends. We appreciate anything you do for season stuff. Whether you sub or just bring a new person in, you're supporting the stream. We love all of you. What Don Lane said. We love everyone here. Absolutely. There we go. Empty space is common these days. Human malware and all that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. In times that aren't 2020, we don't want to see a ghost town. <laughs> I did enjoy it, especially because my friend won the event. Well, that's good. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Carl Lover. And now we've got about 32 minutes left. So, folks, why don't you tell me, who do you think is winning Cities in a Snap right now? Who do you think is winning the detailing contest? Who likes this stuff? Who do you think is pushing it forward? And who do you think is actually getting it done? Do you feel like someone's falling behind? If so, who? Remember, your choices are Pirate Turtle, Eclipse Chris, usually working in Harry IQ. Usually working is in the lead for me. For me, it's kind of a draw between all of them for one reason or another. Harry IQ is going into a lot of the contemporary urban center. Now, he's missing the waterfront aspect, but if he can integrate the waterfront, I think he can do it. And I can already see in my head how he can do it, but it's just a matter of if he gets it done. Then, of course, we have Eclipse Chris with a very unique kind of open air, not exactly open completely, but open air mall. 
and I think that's going to be absolutely great, and I think that'll be great going into an open air area, and hopefully leading straight to the waterfront. I think that would be an absolutely lovely idea. I think Usually Working has, as usual, an incredible, incredible task ahead of him. He's set up a great theme. He is diving so deep into what he's trying to do here with the you know, the Monaco thing with the F1 racetrack, with the marina, he's really going into it. And I think he's going to do splendid with it. And of course, Pirate Turtle just doing a great job all around. Now, I haven't seen much of Pirate Turtle's waterfront. That's one thing I will say. So right now, as far as the actual theme, I would say Eclipse Chris and Usually Working are kind of taking the theme. But Pirate Turtle and Harry IQ cannot be discounted yet. Because with 30 minutes to go, a waterfront could be integrated just like that. There we go. Harry, because, you know, he's doing vehicles as a part of detailing. F1 racetrack? Yep. F1 racetrack. There we go. Nightmare for us. That's strong. There we go. Yeah, we love everyone here. Even Kiggy. Yeah, love is a strong word. Love is a very strong word. Kiggy saved your audio today. That's good. Go, Kiggy. There we go. Well, I guess I know who gets my vote. <laughs> well, I mean, if that's how you want to determine your vote, that's fine. Because, folks, uh, with the rubric changes, you guys are still part of the process. You're still an equal part of the process. You guys haven't been diminished in value. You guys are still worth as much as any of the other categories. So your vote is incredibly important to make sure we can determine who wins details in a snap. And that's right, folks. We also have some other events for you. And included in our upcoming events, we have on Tuesday our first ever Cities in a Snap Grudge Match event. This Cities in a Snap Grudge Match event is between Kitty Claude and Cybex Streams, and they will be building New Orleans French Quarter in one hour. That's right, they will have one hour to build this. That's right, the grudge matches are a quick one hour thing that you can challenge someone to. So if you want to challenge someone, be sure to challenge them. If you want, you can consult them privately and then publicly challenge them. Just make sure to tag Cities and Snap on whatever platform it is so that we can be notified of the challenge and the acceptance, if need be, and get you guys scheduled. And all those events will happen during the week. They will happen Monday through Friday at a time determined between the host, myself, and then the two participants. And of course, it will be chat vote it's going to be 100 chat vote for the grudge match but you know what else we got this month we have on october 18th the charity event breast cancer research foundation it's going to be great that day we are going to be trying to raise some money i am actually working out some final details i have already sent a couple emails to various people uh and we are also going to be having a couple of guests uh guests on the show it's going to be great it'll be at the same time and place but on Sunday. Now, we do have an event that Saturday. So on October 17th, Rural Europe, part of the October bracket. And then October 18th, the charity event is going to be standalone, not part of the October bracket. But there we will have Kitty Claw, Dawn Lane, and let's see here, Toadie YPQ and Little Kaz facing off. And they will have a theme that is going to be announced to them in about a week's time. It's going to be absolutely great. We're going to be raising money for charity so be sure to come on out and show your support there we go all right sim city 3000 had a riots disaster oh sim city 4 had that stuff too all the time quarter pounder i love that stuff there we go good luck hey indeed charity there we go i'm excited for it my favorite charity woohoo october 17th yeah yeah october 17th and 18th there we go and that's right and also that little calendar above me does not include grudge match unfortunately but grudge match should be a part of that and we will make it a part of that when it comes time there we go 18th grand pone sunday sunday october 17th and 18th they're both more because 17th is cities and snap and then of course 18th is breast cancer research foundation and snap that's really long i should come up with a better way to abbreviate that all right, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. There we go. And folks, with 27 minutes remaining, it looks like Eclipse Chris is now finalizing his ideas for an open air shopping center. Now, I'm curious, I'm really curious here how he's gonna connect that because right now I'm pretty sold on this as an idea, but I need to see something else from him that's going to show me, okay, he actually has a really cool concept here for connecting it to the city. Because a cool idea by itself is only part of the equation. You've also got to make sure it connects. It's so very important. And now Harry IQ has the seagull problem. Rip. Fighting cancer in a snap. Maybe. I'm participating in CS on the 17th. There we go. Dick's Sporting Goods. There we go. 
Congrats, guys, for researching and stuff. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it. There we go. <laughs> Get wrecked, Dawn Lane, by Grampone. There we go. And then, I, da, 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 da. Cow's wife noted, I have noted the things. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and I am curious what part Turtle is doing here. So let's go ahead and check that out. It looks like he is lining some trees and, ooh, that connection is a little on the spotty side. Let's come back to that. Let's go ahead and refresh that. Refresh one. There we go. It's probably that South African re uh, internet connection. I know they sometimes just has it drop. There we go. All right. It's back. Yay! There we go. It's back. All right. So let's dive in and see what we've got. He's got an open air field, which I really think is great. He's got a lot of, it looks like market stalls and possibly little stands on the side. And I'm really curious how it's going to come out. Now, something else here. He's got some interesting markings in the middles of his, at the intersections of his road network here. Now, I like that design, but I wish it would actually carry through on the straights instead of just on the nodes. If it carried through on the segments, I think that'd be absolutely legendary. No worries. Indeed, it would be cool if you usually were to add an Easter egg to win Top Gear, tested three hot hatches on the Monaco racetrack. I, see, I'm looking to see Iron Man out there, man. That's what I think of with that thing. All right, but again, with Pirate Turtle, I'm not quite seeing the waterfront. Now, I could just be missing it this whole time, but I'm not sure how close he's been to the water. There we go. I am so failing this week. Incorrect announcements and schedules. I am no longer worthy of the name The Great Don Lane. You need to change my name to The Mediocre Don Lane. But you're still The Great Don Lane! Because you help us out on Cities and Snap. You make sure that I am kept in check. And whenever I don't get things done, you yell at me and say, Kaz Gem, go do this thing! And I'm like, okay, Don Lane, I will do it. And that alone makes you great because guess what? I am a lot to handle. I really am a lot to handle. There we go, you're still my number one. It's true, you're my favorite Dawn Lane. And let's go ahead and Kitty Claw, and in about four minutes, we'll be closing out that giveaway. Four minutes on the giveaway, folks. Four minutes on the baseline city skylines. Get it, baseline city skylines? Ah. Lol, I don't yell. You just message frequently, like, Kaz, you haven't done this. You haven't done this. There we go. All right. There we go. Am I your favorite car lover, though? You are my favorite car lover. Uh, you're slightly more favorite than mine than car lover 1358, because 1358 uh, was mean and he forgot my birthday. So, yeah, that's, uh, we don't talk about him anymore. There we go. I do that to Slime because it's true. There we go. Failed to give away too many tickets. Remember, you can only get one ticket. I know, Mr. Tommy, you wish that you could get a ticket, but you can't. You, you just can't. There we go. And also, folks, I want to play cities on my phone. So, I'm curious about that. I actually kind of want to try it, but yeah, I just don't have the means to right now. Oh my goodness. And it looks like Harry IQ has left the game and is re-entering. Ooh. Now, do we know if it was a crash or was it intentional? It looked like he was on the workshop, so it looks like it may have been intentional, but I could be wrong. There we go. I don't have this game yet, season snap. I know you don't, Mr. Tommy. You can play it one of these days. It'll be absolutely great. What am I missing here? You're missing absolutely nothing. You're missing absolutely nothing. It's season snap day, hype, all that stuff. It's absolutely glorious. And I can't find... Oh, there it is. Okay, that'll run. I was about to say, oh my goodness, what radio's playing? It's Mars Radio, though. We all like Mars Radio. It's a great way to get hype for cities and a snap. There we go. What's up, Gareth? I'm Marvel or two. There we go. Wait, what? Am I missing a Marvel or is he missing a Marvel or two? Because according to some people, I'm missing ping pong balls. There we go. All right, brainless. Yep, the brainless one is here. I have allowed him an internet connection uh, from the basement. That way he can actually participate in things today. Ours is all association. He needs to play. Does she? There we go. All right, tell her to enter. There we go. Put the country radio. No, Ignis. No country radio. Mars radio. Unsubs, unfollows. <laughs> also, I don't have a reason to enter into any of the City Skylands giveaways because I had a City Skylands connection, which I think I won when the devs gave the key for the collection. Nice, car lover. I was like, why is Kaz screaming at me? <laughs> I mean, dude, brainless. Of course. I'm always going to scream at No, why would I scream at you? You're the brainless legend. The brainless one. You are here to perform all of our brainless moderator duties. There we go. And now, of course, uh, with about 20 minutes left, 
I'm starting to really feel usually working over here. I know a lot of people were starting to feel like he was their favorite pulling ahead, but I think he really is pulling ahead as far as the rubric goes now. Because Eclipse Chris, yeah, he has a couple great things, but look at all that space that Eclipse Chris has to fill. Just 21 minutes to go. And Harry IQ loading back in. And Pirate Turtle, I'm still not 1000% sure where his waterfront is. So I'm getting a little concerned, but folks, here's hoping that they manage to pull it off. Because with just 21 minutes left, anything can happen on Cities in a Snap. You know, I just pass the key onto your face, sure, to help them do go in there and channel. You can do that, sweetie. You can absolutely do that. Because this is all about uh, various community members giving back to the community. That's what this is all about. All these keys are provided by community members for this event. So again, I want to thank everyone who has done that, continues to do that, etc. It really means a lot. There you go. Does anyone know? Cute cat games. Uh, Symphony, like my cat. Symphony, she is very adorable. She is probably the world's most beautiful kitten. Uh, there we go. 22 minutes left. Enough for one restart for average detailer. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I mean, if they have a good SSD, more like 10, but yeah, 20 minutes. Whew! Kind of really close there. We got Pirate Turtle here. I'm still not sure what he's doing. I still don't know where his waterfront is. <laughs> like, again, I feel like I feel bad because I feel like maybe I've missed his waterfront, but I've been paying attention. I just don't see it. There we go. All right, man, Osiris, I'm petitioning for you to play CS. There we go. No, I can't. You should. There we go. But you have and need help deciding on which drill to vote for. Do what I do. Use the rubric. Type rubric in chat. That's right. And that rubric is technically the old rubric, but it's technically not being phased out until Monday. So, yeah. Be sure to use that to help you with your decision. I'm using a different rubric this week, which I will make publicly available as usual in the Discord. Also, folks, be sure to check out all of our socials and like our tweets, retweet them, go to Reddit and upvote and comment, do all that stuff, and be sure to help the event, because all of that helps the event so much you have no idea. Even little things like sitting around during the commercial break that we're going to have here in about 20 minutes. That absolutely helps. Every bit helps the event. There we go. Oh no, is population play today? It's not. So here are the differences this week. This week, there are the population and city size are worth half of what they normally are because i do believe that they can be a nice way to kind of break a tie between two participants but for the most part it's not nearly as important as it is in a normal week and the beautification and detailing categories are multiplied essentially by three because i actually have subcategories for each each worth 10 to where we have thematic macro and micro so basically thematic details thematic macro detailing and then thematic, uh, and then, sorry, yeah, thematic, micro detailing, thematic, ma macro detailing, and then thematic just, or sorry, non-thematic detailing, so outside the theme detailing. Now, that could be things like, for instance, waterfront race, waterfront shopping doesn't necessarily include a racetrack, so adding all those details to the idea of the track, that would actually go towards detailing that isn't directly part of the theme for usually working, things like that. Well, usually is going to have macro detail, and I think he is getting that. Dory is like an old woman's name. There we go. I like Dory more. There we go. Why? So excited to see them proper done. 20 minutes, OMG. It's almost time to check out the cool builds. It is almost time. We so cool. The waterfront magically appeared in the last five minutes like a flood in the climax of an apocalypse movie. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Dory's a cute name, too. There we go. Sorry, Mr. Tommy. Wrecked. Just keep sewing, Kitty Claude. Luna is a moon's name. It's true. Dory is a fish name. It's true. It is a fish name. At least it is whatever I think of it. And usually working, it's doing absolutely great. Now, I am, again, very curious if he's going to manage to get this working the way he wants. Because I feel like he's bitten off a lot here, but I feel like he can do it. If he can manage to sell the shopping center feel now, I think he'll be in good shape. Whereas, again, Eclipse Chris, he still has a lot of gaps. Now, he is trying to work on the perfect shopping center here. But, again, I'm curious if he's going to be able to pull this all off. I think he'll be able to, but it's going to take every skill he has in order to get done in time. We can't hear Dorian not think of Finding Emo. Neither can I, and I didn't even care for that movie. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, ran out of drink. Rip. That stinks. Bad time to run out of drink. 
Oh well, folks, with 16 minutes left, anything can happen, folks. What do you think is going to happen? Do we think that we're going to see a real waterfront from Harry IQ or Pirate Turtle, or are they just going to play to their strengths? I think all are equally valid, and I think all are definitely possibilities. And also, I would like to know, all of them are building in roughly the same area, despite the fact that they could have built anywhere on the map. So I'm incredibly curious about that. These guys don't tell Mr. Tommy it will be Luna. <gasps> Wait. It will be Luna? Wait. Uh, so, wait, wait, wait. It will be... Um, Luna could work. You know what? I'm voting for Luna. I, I trust Iris on this one. I vote Luna. Hashtag Team Luna. Get your hashtags in now, folks. Guess gotta get two kittens, one shame. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can no longer enter the giveaway. The giveaway is over. Let's see who won. Tony YPQ! Congratulations, Tony! Get the hype in chat for Tony YPQ on winning that copy of City Skylines. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Wink. I'm sure that you'll enjoy playing it. Nudge. <laughs> I mean, heck, I'm okay with that. Thanks. Yeah, it's always rigged. Hashtag rigged. It's always rigged according to Cuboid, but you know what? That's okay. Because we don't care what Cuboid thinks. Now we do care what he thinks. Because we love Cuboid just like we love all of our moderators. Folks, please take a moment with me now and thank all of our moderators that help make this event happen on a weekly basis. That's right. Without these moderators, this event would not happen. It's a lot of man hours. It's a lot of work to pull off. But you know what? With their help, we're able to get it done. Also, special shout out to people like Cow's Wife for running Twitter the day of the event, during the event proper, during the two and a half, roughly three hours that the event is live. Thank you to I and the City's Dork for helping run the Facebook. Thank you to King Prox for helping manage the Discord. Thank you, DC Shadow Demon, for moderating help. Thank you, Dawn Lane, Night Morphus, Cuboid, Brain of Society, and others that help with moderating the day of the event, not just in this chat, but in all of the chats. And also, a huge shout out to those others that have helped on the back end. Whether you're helping pitch an idea, whether you're just giving me a cool thing that could work, whether you're just sitting there for me to bounce ideas off of, it is all incredibly useful and it helps push this event forward. And also, thank you to those that subscribe, drop bits, all that stuff. It really means a lot. Now, sure, okay, we'll catch on to the city's game. Doesn't seem to be up early. I know, right? But you know, folks, we've got less than 15 minutes left. There we go. Yes, DC is a great lurker. It's true. Moderator, streamer can give away stuff on their streams that they get from CIS. Is that still the case? Of course, Mooks. Of course, Mooks. That is always the case. You never have to ask. Anything you win from Season Snap can be used on your own channel. We do not particularly care what you do with it. You can sit on it and not use it. You can give it away on your own stream. You can give it to a friend. You can give it to a different streamer. You can do whatever. You can auction it off on the internet as, I won this in cities and a snap. But uh, I wouldn't recommend that. There we go. All right, both through 15 minutes. Hype, indeed. And now with 13 and a half minutes left, again, I'm starting to feel a little more concerned as we go for Eclipse Chris. He has so many gaps in his build, and gaps are definitely going to count against the overall beautification, I think. Because again, you're focused on one area, but you don't want to have big, obvious gaps in the scenery. And he has those, and he's got to fill those in, otherwise he's going to fall critically behind in the scores. Okay, so I know you have a rural European thing, but what about rural Eastern Europe or rural Northern Europe? Uh, so I have thought about those, and we will get those if we do another rural theme. We're going to see how people like the rural theme this time around. And if people like that, we'll go with some other ones. We've gotten some great ideas for, you know, rural Mediterranean. We've gotten uh, East Asia Pacific Islands. We've gotten one for South American rural. There's a lot of other rural things. Just I picked the three rurals that I thought would be most popular and would be the, I guess, the most accessible to the people that normally would want to submit to the event. So I just looked at the category, looked at the different people that were interested, and that is how I determined the weeklies. You go, rural Australia would be a little boring. Again, there's a lot of different ideas, though. There we go. Oh, Harry, why, oh, why? I don't know. I think Harry is really focusing on having a great set of details. But again, I think Harry's theme is starting to fall a little short at this point. Because he's got 12 minutes or so to change my mind on that. And right now, ugh, it's not looking good. You know, where's Harry's water? I know, Sweetsie. Where is it? Gaps in the snap. There we go. Let's see here. And let's see here. 
If you auction it, you must raise the roof like that. Exactly, Toady. I mean, if I ever auction it, I'll just be like, yeah, raise the roof. Wait, am I allowed to win things from season snap? I don't think I'm allowed to. There we go. Yeah, a better fix for Harry would be... Would just be to hide the notice. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. He does need to hide those notifications a little bit. There we go. What is he doing? He's placing a lot of trees. And again, I'm really concerned because at this point, he has kind of done a shopping center, but he hasn't really embraced the waterfront at all. And this is waterfront shopping center. So I do feel like he's definitely going to be lacking in the theme category, but his details and beautification are strong. So I don't think he's going to fail in that category. But yeah, the overall theme, I think, is starting to not look too good on that perspective. Nothing is stopping you, Kaz. It's true. Save the snap needs you. This competition only happens because of people like you. Whether you compete, subscribe, buy merch, donate, or just watch, even though you don't really like cities like Josh 306, we love all of you. It's true. We love all of you. Because remember, folks, it's you that we do this for, and it's thanks to you that we're able to keep doing it. And I thank you all for doing that. There we go. And then final two minutes are about to go. That's right. We got a little over 10 and a half minutes. There you go. How do you hide the notifications? A mod. Uh, not even a mod. It's actually just base game now, Toady. You can just block it in base game. Because it's absolutely fabulous. There we go. Final 10 minutes are incoming. There we go. Nothing is stopping you. What is he doing? Yeah, better fix her hair. Rural Asia Pacific can work. I think it can definitely work. But, Palpatine, I do have to say that, again, there's a reason why I didn't do that this turn. I think you'll even agree that just for uh, as far as the wider cities community it feels that i picked the three that would be the most accessible and the most desired for as many people as possible let me do casual you do a lot for this community we appreciate it i do try to online whether it's hosting season snap doing my monday through thursday streams by the way check out the casual streams monday and tuesday skylines wednesday thursday strategy games uh whether it's doing that stuff whether it's doing season snap whether it's working on the polyphony stuff which by the way major polyphony updates incoming any users of that uh you're about to gain a lot more functionality <laughs> what do i have up my sleeves i've got a lot up my sleeves for that you go josh you missed the one i insulted ever and it's true best promo ever exactly there we go we'll build this up over time and look at this in 2021 yeah exactly like honestly i think it should work uh palpatine but again I do think that's one of those things that I again I want to experiment because that's like because that's kind of like two experiments too far because you have to think of experimentation like they did with Marvel's cinematic universe of movies they didn't just immediately start in with like okay let's do Ant-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy and Doctor Strange like three really weird things they started out with let's do Iron Man let's do Thor let's do Captain America like, let's do the big things then we can start rolling into kind of the weirder stuff that we want and that's kind of what I've been doing so you'll know I was always hyped about season snap the details edition but we waited to do that until about five months in not because I wasn't hyped about details but because I wanted to make sure that cities and snap worked before we delved into details in the snap there you go. is alive and we'll take over watch out exactly can polyphony users opt in and out features I want the mass but I'm not sure about the other bits yet yep Gareth, uh, you can fully opt in and out of all, any and all features. You can be on there just for the mass bands, which is by far the most popular thing. You can opt in for just mass bands and CPR. There's a lot of things you can do that are absolutely great. You can even, uh, I'm adding a chat log feature so that you're able to easily search your entire chat history as far as polyphony is known for and find anything that is questionable. You can sit there and run data, things like that. And you're actually able to do it just by logging in with Twitch. You won't need a separate login. There we go. Polyphony is all knowing. Greg, yes, it's Kaz's graphics card. There we go. Is Polyphony Skynet? Maybe. And then Greg, is Power Troll Frozen? Uh, actually, no, that was an internet derp. Uh, that was an internet derp. That one in particular wasn't my graphics card. If it was my graphics card, the whole thing would crash. Uh, right now, brainless. But right now, it's just Pirate Turtle's connection to the Twitch servers. Just keep in mind, I'm latching into him from the Twitch servers. So anytime there's a little flub up there, it just means that I can't pull it. There we go. The Waterfront Shopping Center is feel a bit empty with not many Sims using out the one. Exactly, Core Pounder. And that is going to be a little bit of kind of a i guess a an interesting thing to talk about because i do have an activity category in the new rubric i have an activity category as far as is it active is it being used and i have it in there for the detailing rubric but i'm not really sure what the weight of it is going to be right now it's just the flat 10 
I don't know if I need to lower it or not. We're going to use today to kind of find out. But I really would expect you to, to see a little bit of activity. I'm not looking for like hordes and hordes of people, but just like some examples of people walking on the upper tiers. Some examples of people using the stairs. Just things like that. So that feels a little bit more alive so you can get the idea of what the atmosphere is like in these shopping centers. But again... It's kind of experimental today, so we're going to be just kind of flying by it. And if it just looks like everyone's flat out ignored it, then I might just eliminate it from the rubric entirely effective immediately. Here we go. I've seen those ducks too many times. I know, right? We've all seen the ducks. There we go. Rubber ducks, indeed. There we go. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, anytime you see a stream that's frozen, uh, just on the, like, everything else that's good, but, like, one of the streams is frozen, just let one of the moderators know they can always refresh that stream for us. Rubber Ducky, you're the one. Rubber Ducky is for the win. Also, that's not the best place to put a bench. Just right in front of the pillars? Wouldn't you want it to face away from the pillars? That confuses me. Okay, come on. Please twist those around, Eclipse Chris. Come on, you're better than this. Okay, he's putting it, like, between them. So that's a little better, I guess. Yeah, I'm still not sold on that. I'm still not sold on that. Cash or American Band Ducks from CIS competitions. I mean, that's half of Eclipse Chris's gag, isn't it? <laughs> that's half of it at this point. And folks, with just five and a half minutes remaining, who do you think is winning, folks? Be sure to get your opinions in now. Who do you think is winning right now? This, of course, is not part of the final vote. But what do you think, or who do you think is winning? What city do you think is doing best? Is your favorite streamer winning? Is your favorite streamer maybe losing? Uh, what do you think, folks? Because I think it's great to also sit there and decide, hey, I like this idea better, but I think the best city is still this other city. That's something that I've gotten really picky about because I sit there all the time and oftentimes my favorite city doesn't even get the highest on the rubric before I add in chat vote because I've added in so many layers of security of making sure that, okay, they have to have X, Y, Z, A, B, C, that sometimes my, actually a lot of times, my favorite city doesn't win. And that's just so fun. But hey, that lets me know that at least the rubric is holding true. <laughs> there we go. It's always biased, obviously. Remains unbiased as usual. Do any streamers have power problems? I don't know, Palpatine. I really don't. So far, I haven't seen a lot of it. We saw a lot of it early on. But I think as they're wrapping up their cities, we're not going to see nearly as much of it. There we go. Remains totally biased. Well, at least Josh is honest. If nothing else, Josh is an honest man. How are you doing, Josh? Hope you're doing well. There we go. Everyone is a winner. Whoever participates in CS. It's true. Everyone is a winner who participates because this event is super hype. And it's hype because of the legendary participants we get every week. And because of you, chat. Every one of you viewers, you all help make this event amazing. Whether you're just viewing, whether you sub, whether you drop bits, all that stuff. It really means a lot. And it helps push this event forward so much you have no idea. The road the road tool mod in the snap. Oh my goodness. The, uh, the road tool... Honestly, that would be interesting. The internet, I'm assuming you're talking about the intersection markings tool, correct? The intersection markings tool could be really interesting to see who could... Now, we do have something, an idea for something intersections in a snap. That will probably be an hour-long event. And that will be something probably just during the week as a bonus event or maybe a random Sunday. Where people are given a task of, hey, you have these feeding lines. And you have to make sure that people can travel on it. You have to create the best intersection. The biggest thing is, I'm trying to come up with a rubric for that. That's the big hold up on that event right now. Intersections in a snap? Yep, intersections in a snap. I also have plans for maps in a snap. But maps in a snap is really hard to come up with a rubric for. It's absolutely hard to come up with a rubric for. That's why I haven't moved forward with maps in a snap yet. Oh yeah, intersections or roads or transport in a snap. We've done transport in a snap. We've done that very successfully. People have done absolutely legendary. We've even done some of the scenarios with transit before. But yeah, it's it's absolutely great. There's just so many good ideas, and that's why, folks, we are willing to add more ideas, but we need more support in order to do that, to be able to schedule it, to be able to just get the time to do it. We need your help in order for all these extra events that everyone wants to see to happen, because there's only so many Saturdays, so if we want to start seeing regular additional events, we need your support in order to make that happen. So if you want to see things like your transit all that stuff if you want to start seeing vanilla only brackets all of that support will make that happen you can support us on patreon you can support us here by subscribing you can drop it you can do all that stuff 
to help make sure that this event can grow in the direction that you want. There we go. Since 30, 2013, it's time, I know, right? You can play the whole game in two hours. Yeah, exactly. It takes you two hours to finish the game. Honestly, SimCity 2013 speedrun would be a more realistic thing. And I think I got bingo on my card. Bingo! Wait, you got bingo? Yay, bingo! Post on the Discord, palps. Just got a diagonal. Nice! Post on Discord. Remember, folks, anytime you finish bingo or just the end of stream, didn't get a bingo, be sure to post it in the Discord. And with 90 seconds left, sorry, we got 100 seconds left, but coming down on 90 seconds left, folks, get the hype rolling in chat. That's right. It is time for the last 90 seconds of Cities in a Snap Detailing Edition. This is the second ever Details in a Snap. And of course, the Ducks have made their return on Eclipse Chris's. Oh, it's absolutely great. There was an easier way to do that, but man, he needs a PO tutorial. I've got one if you need it. So be sure to check those stuff out. And of course, folks, we have 65 seconds left folks anything can happen get the hype rolling in chat if you haven't already let each of these folks know that you love them and that you are rooting for them that they're doing they're doing a fabulous job because folks it is details in the snap it is a legendary time and with 50 seconds left they've just got a little bit of time left to get everything they need sorted to make sure that they have the best waterfront shopping areas possible within two hours time and 40 seconds left get it rolling in chat folks we've got 30 five seconds and oh eclipse chris's waterfront has come together very nicely so as usually working still a little concerned about harry iq but you know what i think he'll pull something together for us and it looks like pirate turtle also needs a little bit of help in that department but still we are rolling we are good to go we got 20 seconds left folks 20 seconds remain and details in a snap here we go folks and with 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 Five, four, three, two, one, and time. That is Cities in a Snap. We are good. Oh, that was a blast. Whoo. That was, uh, whew. Let me wipe a little bit of sweat off the old brow there. Oh, my goodness. That was hype. Absolutely hype. But you know what, folks? It's not over yet because we're going to take a brief little ad break and then we will be right back for the judging portion of the competition. So be sure not to go anywhere. Be sure to stick around to help support the channel by just viewing these ads. Again, it really adds up. It helps out. I know we don't like seeing these ads, but you know what? A quick little ad break after two hours of epic competition, right before 30 minutes of judging and all of that stuff. I think that's going to be absolutely fine. So you know what? quick little ad break it'll be about two and a half minutes long and folks we'll be right back before you know it don't go anywhere more season snap right after this Hello and welcome to this week's Cities in a Snap event I am your organizer and host Kazjim and I would like to thank all of you for coming out today a couple brief things. First of all, thank you moderators who help make this happen. They help keep the chat uh, kind of sane. They also help answer a lot of questions. They also do things such as managing the Discord, managing our Facebook page, keeping the Instagram and Twitter running, and a variety of other activities such as being giveaway wardens. Also, I want to thank all of you who helped make this event happen on a weekly basis. This, ha this does take a lot of man hours on the back end, and uh, it's up to you guys to make sure that it can continue. You guys can help contribute to the Cities and Snap event directly by subscribing to this channel here, twitch.tv slash cities and snap, or by going and giving bits, or you can donate uh, directly, or you can even sign up for our Patreon link down below. And we also want to encourage all of you to let your friends know how you spend your Saturdays and also be sure to hop in the community discord. We are in there all the time. We're answering questions. We're responding to feedback and we're continually trying to make this event better for you, the viewer. Anyways, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you to this week's participants. And I hope you enjoy this week's cities in a snap. Hello and welcome to this week's Cities and
All right, we are back, folks. We are back. Uh, yeah, quick Kaz ad and then the uh, season and then the standard Twitch ads. But again, that helps support the stream. Thank you all so much for sticking around for that. It also gives myself and the contestants a quick breather. So. What's going to happen next is we are going to visit each of these four participants and they're each going to have five minutes to tell us about their city, tell us about the build, tell us things that worked, things that didn't, and just kind of sell their city to us. And I'll be filling out my rubric. Of course, the moderators will be able to kind of check in on me, make sure that I'm not doing any funny business and whatnot as usual. And obviously I would encourage you to keep an open mind and vote for your favorite city not your favorite streamer because that's what we're here for we're here to determine who did the best waterfront shopping center with details and all of that in just two hours time without further ado the judging segment so now let's go ahead and check out participant number one participant number one of course being the absolute legend known as pirate turtle what's up pirate turtle pirate turtle Pi Pirate Turtle? Hello? It looks like Discord might be derped. Well, that's not good. Yep, Discord is derped. There we go. Well, that's not good. The Discord servers are having a problem. Uh, let's see here. Let's do it this way. There we go. We're calling Pirate Turtle instead. There we go. It was probably a freak out from the graphics card thing. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, these things are not good right now. There we go. Yep. Uh, that's just waking out. Uh, let me see if I can reopen Discord. I do apologize for this, folks. This is just symptomatic of having a crash and it affecting all of the audio video stuff on the computer. There we go. All right, and let's see if this can work. All right, Pirate Turtle, can you hear me? Uh, can you? Yes, all right. We're good to go. Sorry about that. No worries. All right, so uh, you've got about five minutes on the clock, and of course, uh, just tell us about your city. Take us through anything that uh, you think worked, things that didn't. Uh, remember, the theme is waterfront shopping, so try and sell us on that. And I'll be marking up the rubric, and the floor is yours, really. Coolio. So here we have a, a small mining town that uh, has ran out of mines. And uh, the mayor had a decision to make on how to get the town popular again. So what's better than tourist attraction? And uh, we have a waterfront shopping center. And not what everybody else thought waterfront, but one with a massive aquarium. Right. So we have uh, some nice sharks in there. And like I said in, in the interview, we have a more um, European style. South Africa has a lot of European style um, type buildings. We haven't got a lot of um, American style so very on top of each other shops no big real shops um, restaurant areas and then obviously the best part about being at the restaurant is you get to see the giant aquarium right in the front um, right in the front here also we have Neptune a uh, wonderful statue from one of the creators we, we love a lot in, in the detail section is Don B. Right. Uh, and who better to watch over the water than Neptune? Um, so I used the Melbourne um, Speedway. This is actually for roads, but I thought it looked really cool for an entrance piece for a mall. And my favorite part of, of it is at night time. You get some rainbow lights and that just sets the scene for coming into Ooh, the mall beautiful um sorry let me just get out of freaking po <laughs> so yeah obviously tons of po um done um great entrance and 
a sort of like a, a stopping point, if you will, when you come off the stairs and the first thing you see is the giant aquarium. So the whole focus being on, on that water front. Um, yeah, and that's it. Nice. Well, it looks absolutely great. So, I mean, you've got about two and a half minutes left. So uh, what little kind of nooks and crannies uh, show us some of the, I guess, really kind of nitty gritty type of details uh, that you're super proud of? Anything that you think really stands out and sets this city apart from anything you've done or anything other people are doing? Mm. <clears throat> I didn't. I spent so much time on the freaking stairs to get the stairs right. I probably wasted too much time on it, but um, I wanted them perfect. Um, got invisible pathway so pedestrians can get down. Um, as you can see, I didn't get a chance to do my team PE, so people are still driving around in their cars once they get to the bottom. But um, they are working stairs, so people can get to the shops. Um, I just... I, like I said, <laughs> I didn't think it's enough time to do nitty gritty. Uh, maybe I went too big a scale. Um, the aquarium is fully, completely detailed all by hand. It's got a glass front. It's got the water PO um, to give it that reflective. It's got the water on the top, the blue asphalt at the back to give it the more aquarium style look. Um, rocks and dirt inside the aquarium. We've got the coral running. So I think that was, I, I spent my, most of my time on the, on the aquarium and the stairs and I really like those details. I think it looks great. It really does. And I think it's a great thing because it's not just like a central point. It's very present. Like no matter where you are in your shopping center, you're sitting there looking at that. Now that's a really interesting and I would say very unique approach to this theme because again, uh, obviously, I mean, you've got a lot of water around you, but you created your water feature. I think that's absolutely great. So out of curiosity, what drove you to create your own water feature rather than utilizing the vast amounts of coastline that are <laughs> well, available on the map? Obviously, I don't know we're going to get Blade Island, number one. And number two, um, I, w I wanted to have that, that very... I, I like buns and wordplay, you know, so water front and literally you have water in the front. It's... <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's not something you'd be able to pull off in in a more standardized cities game. You you have to have detail. You have to use the PO. You have oh, to yeah. use the assets to get there. I would definitely say that, and that's it's such a clever take on it, and honestly, very strong. I would say absolutely strong. Uh, now, we're breaking up again, guys. Oh, we are. Well, I'm sorry about that. Uh, if it's like last time, it was just an internet connection issue. But for your consideration, folks. Twitch.tv slash PirateTurtle13. Be sure to check them out. See if it's the city for you. And now we're on to Eclipse Chris. What's up, Chris? Hello. Thank you very much. Oh, oh and hello, Duck. Uh, how are you? It's so, early. Ernie the Duck. Oh, I, I know. I, I'm just saying hello, Duck, as I would say hello, human. So, oh, you've got about five minutes on the clock. Uh, take us on a journey. Take us on a tour. Show us what you think of your, cool. uh, of your city and show us anything that you think really makes it stand out and sell us on this waterfront shopping that we allegedly have. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, my waterfront shopping, indeed. Uh, right, so I wanted to try and go more UK build, try and bring in what I've been doing in my um, normal streams into the Cities and Snap. Um, I wanted to go for a bit of a, like a renovation or a recovery sort of thing. It didn't quite work out as I had planned. Um, I had brought in a tsunami to sort of, because it's that sort of waterfront stuff where you can like be prone to getting disasters like that. So my idea was to have the flooding come in and then they're, they're like in here to renovate the place because it got a bit trashed and um, they're basically rebuilding it essentially. And some of the, uh, all the um, little details of the construction work and um, the fact that the roof's not there anymore. And it's all sort of being cleared away. <laughs> um I started off with making a decent sort of size parking with all traditional UK um, shopping. Nice big old multi-story car park, just pop that down. Um, and they can walk along the uh, walkways over to the, well, the main sides. The <laughs> entrance wall is kind of fallen away and it's 
needs to be rebuilt. Um, I've gone for a multi-level approach on my sort of shopping stuff because I'm more used to seeing that personally, having the different heights of the um, or, or different shops, different levels. Um, we've got the lovely escalators um, here, which actually are the running escalators, which are quite fancy. Very fancy indeed. Um, I, I really struggled with trying to get my um, bits together, and I thankfully managed to cut away part of it because I was like, I'm not going to have enough time, and then just stuck with a simple L shape. So you'll be doing all your nice shopping in that. It's got some nice little water features with Ernie's uh, babies in here. Um, got a few in each bit, enjoying the lovely water today. Um, over here, when you come into what was to be a big plaza with nice gathering points, there would have been more shopping around the side here, but I didn't get enough time to get into that. And have a nice sort of stroll uh, after your shopping, have some food and that, and have a stroll along the uh, waterfront. So right. I've PO'd these uh, staircases in to make it accessible. Um, the woman's still screaming about a tsunami in the background. I can hear it. <laughs> um, yeah, so if that sort of just nice sort of waterfront itself, the shopping isn't directly on the waterfront, but it's nearby. So you've got that um, where you can access it still. Some of the smaller details I was sort of working on was to sort of make the support pillars. That was uh, quite tricky to try and line them up. Um, Peering the glass uh, walkways and putting in the... Uh, railings across the sides. Um, I tried to hide all of the jank on the edges by trying to put office buildings on the sides. We sort of hid away all the sort of the blank walls, which makes it look quite complete in that respect. So all of these are PO buildings and such, which I've, um, I've stuck buildings inside buildings to make it look like office spaces above the shopping itself. Right. I so I've gone a bit sort of small scale. It turned out a lot better than I thought it was towards the end. I was like, I was really panicking towards the last uh, few uh, half hour. And I was like, cut my losses and just cut the limb off and then just go with what I've got <laughs> as such. Right. Um, got a nice night shot as well. So again, with these details, it's all about the visuals and sort of how it looks and feels overall. Oh yeah, and it looks absolutely great. The buildings great. light up really fantastic, and I've put in the uh, lighting for the um, workers in here with scaffolding. Well, and also the difference that you have between the more rounded areas and the more angular junctions, I think that's yes. a great thing, because that's something that you find in modern design aesthetic, where you try and balance the soft and the harsh curves, and I think you did a great job of that. Yeah, you never get sort of straight lines really, you sort of get the curv curvings and the um, right angles and such. And I love these keys. They're really cool with all the lights. And nice. we've got a nice looming star above us tonight. Not quite Nicolas Cage, but it's still pretty decent. I like the Death Star touch. I'm a bit of a Star Wars nerd, so I'm definitely partial <laughs> to that. That's, that's yes. great. You're always wowing me with all these funny little things you're managing to do. But overall, I love the build. You've really embraced the uh, waterfront aspects. Uh... Uh, and you really did embrace the shopping. I didn't see it as integrated, though, because there's not a lot of shopping, I guess, right on the waterfront, but you got the waterfront, I, you got the shopping, yeah. and it's on the I would have added more if I hadn't have um, uh, slowed down too much trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> right, yeah, and hey, that, that happens, and that's the season's yeah, Because yeah. I could tell that I mean, you... Because it looked like you were building hours, a core. If I'm yeah. correct, you were building a core, and then you were going to, like, start invading that waterfront, but instead you, like, did your it core, and then good. you have a... Not really basic, but like you have the beginnings of the waterfront. And like if you had another 20 minutes, you'd have shops all around there type thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if I have three hours, then yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The legendary three hour. But yeah, hey, that's the beauty of it. Overall, really great. Folks, again, for your consideration, twitch.tv slash Eclipse Chris. And we will be chatting with you in the, uh, well, we'll be chatting with you later regardless, uh, whether you win, lose, no or somewhere in between. All right, and best of luck. We will go ahead and move on then to participant number three, Usually Working. What's up, Usually oh, Working? that is me. Yeah, that, that's you. Uh, so it is. 
you know how season snap works by now you, you got five minutes you tell us about your city take us on a tour tell us whatever beautiful stories you have i've got my popcorn and snacks right here we're just gonna buckle up and it's gonna be absolutely great i can't wait to hear whatever stories you've got to unfold for us yeah well uh today i'm doing a little different uh, normally i generally and uh, create everything myself and i come up with the story and i have a whole uh, lore that goes along with it but this is an irl build um in two hours we have attempted to make the main front and the main port uh, of monaco which uh, monaco is the principality uh it's in the the french well it's a independent principality uh in the french riviera so on the southern side of france and it is absolutely known for being completely gorgeous uh, a great yacht and an, a, a great place to go visit and i absolutely want to visit it and the best place i can do is visit it here in city skylines and what i enjoy best about it is that it is a very mediterranean it's a very tiered city um there's all sorts of different types of, of shops and everything that go along and also there is in fact a formula one race a very famous formula one race that goes straight through the city and all they do is actually they leave the city the same and they just put up barriers and block off some certain things and uh the formula one race will just race through the cities it's a very prominent place to know at the same time to go along with that there is multiple tiers that go along so you have the the main dockway and then you have the first set of tiers where the uh, the very famous uh f1 stadium it gets set up and it gets teared down every year and it's usually right here uh and also uh these people are, in fact, fully animated and cheering on their favorite team. Um, these, are, these guys are 100% cheering on their favorite team. I didn't just want uh, plastic people here. I wanted I wanted some real people. Along with the vehicle, the cars themselves. Let me grab one of these guys real quick. Let me, let me grab one real quick. As he goes past the, the main shopping center, they absolutely do race all the way through the city they're going to start here at the start line and then they're going to go here's all the main shopping center which is a very well-known shopping center uh, oh hey get out of the road you're not allowed to do that where's the officials they're going to go through the chicane there first going to go up to turn number one goes up around the corner past the pier through and then past all the housing that's up here uh so all this up here on the left hand side is going to be housing it's very mediterranean and very awesome to go see there's also great shops. There's Monaco Motors that is right there on the corner. You can have parking there, all that fun stuff. Then you're gonna go up towards the original part of Monaco as we rush through here towards the old uh, Principalis, the Monaco Casino, and the Monaco Hotel. You go past the roundabout, there's the palace, there's the Monaco Hotel. Oh, excuse us guys, we're trying to break here. And then around this corner, excuse us, beep beep, get off the track. Where's the officials? Somebody call the officials, get off the track. Uh, as we race through here, through the herringbone turn, there is the casino. And as we go around down here, we head back past all the hotels and then back towards the boat club, which in fact looks like a giant boat, which is really awesome. Uh, I just absolutely love this. This place is awesome. Uh, and then of course, there's always something going on, mainly on this main storefront, even though it is uh, when they take the F1 off. So when the Formula One leaves, this whole thing then becomes a lot more boat storage and then also shopping. And uh, these shops underneath here are absolutely great restaurants uh, and very famous, famous stores. Um, a lot of French stores, of course, because it is a principality of, well, let's say independent principality, but it used to be, used to be France. Um, so yeah, this is this is my city, and of course we have all of the yachts that go along. Uh, the main pier, which is a very famous pier. Uh, so there's the main pier, and then on this side you'd have the the boats, and on this side is where all the the billionaires, so the Jeff Bezos yachts get parked here, and then everyone else comes out of here, uh, onto the main storage part here, and then out to here. And so this is the this is what we've done so far, and uh, we did get the. The Formula One race to actually work. It is a little, it's like a little microchasm of what we could have done uh, with only two hours. And that's what I absolutely love about Cities in the Snap. If 
you train and you work hard, you can do something as intricate as this, even with only two hours. So I can't you believe you that. did this in two hours. <laughs> I'm like, I, I watched it happen, but I am actually... I'm nearly jaw to the floor over this. I am... I am speechless. You did this in two hours. You did more in two hours than what most people would do in a week. That is... Yeah. That's absurd. Out of curiosity, how much practicing did you do to be able to do that? Like, so uh, that is I'm, nuts. I'm have watched, of course, uh, pub gamings on this YouTube channel. I've watched the entire series, about thirty videos on YouTube, and there's a playlist I could probably link somewhere. And uh, I, I absolutely just love Monaco in the first place. I knew about it because of Formula One, so I kind of knew how the racetrack was going to go by my head. The biggest thing was, um, it took me about uh, six hours this morning. I did a rough draft of what the road network was, and then I knew that I could get the heights and the levels and get the assets on real quick. I'm only using uh, 5,569 assets and mods total, and a lot of them are from that particular series because there's a lot of great people. And then, of course, adding something special, little special personal touches such as the Ronex, uh, Ronex um, all of his uh, decals, and then also his, his Formula One set. Uh, to throw on on top of there so That's about six incredible. hours this morning and then just i guess years of knowledge of watching formula one that's absolutely amazing i can't believe you did that in two hours we we do unfortunately have to move on though just sorry i've been gawking yep. for the last yeah. 90 seconds but it's just it's incredible what you've gotten done folks again for your consideration twitch.tv slash usually working blowing things out of the water as usual and Best of luck, and we'll be moving on now to participant number four, Harry IQ. What's up, Harry? Hello. So, uh, you know the drill by now. You got about five minutes on the clock. Take us on a journey. Tell us your story. <clears throat> sell us your city. Why should it win? Why is it waterfront shopping? And what's Ernie doing here? Of course. Can you just say hello to um, Chris's duck here? This is all because of Chris. It's all anyway, Chris. Okay. Um, yeah, he started the trend of ducks. Anyway, let's um start. So um, this is um basically a USA build that we're going with here. I kind of wanted to go a bit basic. Um, so this isn't really a special kind of unique build, but I kind of wanted to go simple, and then it will, I'll kind of do a bit better in it. So we got the um main road coming in here. We got the shopping center, uh, huge car parks of course because. Uh, it's a shopping center. It needs to be big. Um, unfortunately, they're not really using it that much. Um, so we just got some like uh, truck, truck parking, I guess, where they uh, drop off all this stuff. And then um, we got some light detailing here. Uh, we got some kind of like truck stop here as well. All the storage for that. So just some details here. So it's just some light like, storage for the um, shopping center, I guess, for that. And then, because I didn't really have much waterfront to do, I just thought st sticking a marina down would just help. But I know it doesn't look great, and it's not really, it doesn't really fit in well. But I just put that anyway there, just to add to the theme a bit more. So it's um, yeah, it just adds to the theme a bit more. So I've kind of just um, made all these buildings PO and just like merged them together and um, just to make a shopping center there. And then we just got some roads and then we go up to our little town over here with all our residents in. Right. And then we have a few shops on the corner here. And then uh, some gatherings of people. Uh, we could like, like a little park, I guess, here. And then um, we have these houses these are very nice just surrounded by a forest just a little neighborhood really just to it looks quite nice wow looks great yeah i think these suburban roads really um add to this it looks really nice they do and i've loved yeah. these suburban roads ever since i discovered them and they're oh, yeah. they're such a nice touch and they really do help sell this type of area yeah, I really like the texture on them and the grass and the pavement. I think that looks really like it fits the style very nice. And then um, we, this is to just 
shut them up and stop complaining. Just them um, some schools there. And then um, another thing, uh, we use in section marking tool, like lines here, and it's just amazing like how much stuff like that does. Like the trees last time I did in Japan, uh, my last build, uh, just right. like little details just add so much. So it's just amazing. So yeah, just little touches do it all. And that's I basically agree. it. Wow, that's that's great. I love everything I see here. And again, uh, it was Toadie, I believe, in chat that just said, this looks really, really great. Like, it, it looks like a cut of the Western Hemisphere for a lot of us that are over here in the United States. Like, this yeah. is really what you see. And this is actually something that I have seen personally. And I really do like how you did manage to work the waterfront in. Because obviously, you were a little too far away to make it a primary feature without any super yeah. heavy terraforming, which... When you have the amount of mods and assets you need for detailing, that's always risky. So what you've done, okay. just having that little outreach is beautiful. Like, that's a great way to incorporate it, and I think very realistic. And uh, was that, I guess, the plan that you came up with just in the moment, or is that something that you've had an idea of for a while? Uh, in the moment, really. I kind of wanted to, like, have this a bit closer. I was thinking of moving this back, but that was towards the end, so I think that was too late. So I kind of wanted to have it here, and then we could do some, like, uh, docks back there. But, yeah. It looks great. And it's, and it's also quite a small build as well. I think it's a lot smaller than the others. Yeah, but again, I mean, when you're talking cool, details yeah. and snap, I mean, size and population are worth so yeah. little. That's a worthy sacrifice to make. And I yeah. do love everything I see here. And again, very densely forested, like you mentioned. This looks like something that I would actually see along the side of one of the larger lakes in the center of the United States. Uh, things mm -hmm. like there's a lake called Table Rock Lake and Lake of the Ozarks near me. This very much reminds me of something that you'd see in that area. And I absolutely love it. So, did you get the idea of this from any particular location? Or... What was that, sir? Did you get the idea, that the ideas that you did here from any particular location? Or is this just an amalgamation of ideas? Oh, right. Um, not really, no. I was just kind of thinking USA in general. So, yeah, that was basically it. Well, normally, the shopping center um, kind of near me... It kind of has like um it's just like far away from everywhere it's just in the middle of nowhere and then it just has like a town that veers off and i thought that was like a nice addition and uh to add to like the population and stuff yeah it really is nice like it does look like again to me at least one of those lakefront shopping centers i think that's absolutely great you've done a great job of incorporating the theme and you've also incorporated ernie the duck which you know that'll win you some points of the clips chris <laughs> obviously but, Lots. yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it's been marvel watching you participate again. And best of luck in the votes, my friend. Have a good one. Awesome, Bye. folks. For your consideration, twitch.tv slash HarryIQ. And now, uh, as I type in the votes to go ahead and ready it, folks, I want to remind you of a couple things. First of all, vote for your favorite, vote for your favorite city, not your favorite streamer. Because we've got four excellent beyond excellent builds tonight i cannot emphasize that enough now something else remember this is details in a snap uh you can talk about the stuff that they use things like that the population all that <coughs> sorry about that if you really want but keep in mind this is details in snap so who did the best job of detailing their waterfront shopping centers do you feel like all four of them have waterfront shopping centers i think this is absolutely a discussion that needs to happen and we can have it in chat as we vote so feel free to openly discuss in chat make your case for why you think that one should win or one shouldn't it's up to you i think all of them are winners but in the end chat we've combined got to come up with one winner for this only one the vote is up now and the voting panel is also up on the screen so what do you think chat oh my goodness aj stop yelling bingo card bless you thank you it's a cool idea, just me. It's just an old mine quarry turned into a shopping center. Maybe. Sneeze and snap, Toadie. I am passionate with my blessings. It's true. So, does anyone actually have a water shop front shopping center? Honestly, usually working does. I would say that Pirate Turtle has an interesting interpretation of it. Eclipse Chris almost does. And then Harry IQ, I would say, at the strictest sense, no. But... He does check the boxes for things that I have seen in real life. So I don't think any of them are quite as waterfront shopping as we were hoping for. But again, feel free to 
think about however you want with that for the voting. Because, again, this is going to be a close one. It's on lane. Sounds interesting. Exactly. And the shopping center was there. It's true. It was a cool aquarium, and the shopping center was me, and it was waterfront. Very strictly, it was waterfront. There you go. It was very unique. Vote has a grammatical error. I really... With all the issues we've had today, Palpatine, let's just accept the grammatical error. It's fine. <laughs> with all of the tech issues that happen with the failing graphics card, I'm willing to accept a messed up vote. Just vote for whoever you want. There we go. Well, the Mako was like Market Souls. I love all four builds, just trying to understand. Right, yeah, and again, that's part of the pressure of this, though, is trying to do it in two hours' time, and you've got to make sacrifices. I would say, strictly speaking, I do think Usually Working does have... He has a waterfront shopping center that is currently occupied by an F1 racing track. Now, does that take points away from the theme? Does it add to the theme? That's up to you. That's up to chat. And me, with the rubric. I'm still working on my rubric at the same time. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, let me pull up some totals here. Here we go. Let's see here. That's 19, 21, 26, 31, 4. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think pup activity is going to be a thing. <laughs> I really don't think activity is going to be a thing going forward. So I think activity just seems to be something that's naturally ignored by a lot of detailers, which is fine. But, yeah, I just don't feel like it's a strong suit in this case. There we go. And then let's get this one rolling with... Uh, uh, 26, 31, 35, 40, 41, 41. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, let me check this again. Uh, so you're 11, 21, 33, 43... 47. Okay. Yeah, I definitely tallied wrong there. And then 11, 22, 27, 34, 38, 42. Okay, yeah. That's more like what I thought it was going to be. There we go. So you know Vanilla Cafe is floating on water. Yeah, I was expecting to see a few more of those because I feel like that's really just synonymous with having the waterfront shopping. And it looks like we have a chat vote victor here. So let me go ahead and factor this in. So it's usually Pirate Chris Harry. So usually Pirate Chris Harry. There we go. And so now that brings this up to here and then we've got this in and we have this in. okay and it does look like we have a winner folks we have a winner as per the rules and season snap uh you guys are basically a category i take that I add it into my rubric and with everyone here it looks like the winner of the second ever details in a snap is none other than <laughs> Congratulations, usually working on winning the second ever details in a snap. I Waterfront shopping once. center. I won for guess. You did win. Congratulations. How does it know, feel to it finally pull off a big uh, victory? I just want to thank chat. I just want to thank everyone who was there, actually. Tody was there. Maggie was there. A lot of people stopped in. Uh, and of course, you stopped in on Discord, but that's still stopping in. So I want to thank you guys. This was so much fun. This was a great event. Absolutely great. I'm so excited. All four of you guys did great builds. I mean, here I accuse what I'm just calling the lakefront uh, town. I love that. I love Eclipse Chris's kind of new urbanism idea. I love Pirate Turtles in-ground aquarium thing. I love your Formula One thing. Honestly, all four of you come up with amazing ideas uh, in the moment, and I can't imagine a better competition than we had today. It's been absolutely legendary. We are, of course, going to let you go to your adoring fans. Uh, usually working. Congratulations again. You are a legend. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I had so much fun. Oh, it definitely is fun. It's always fun here. But in the meantime, we will chat with you later.
And of course, folks, that brings to a conclusion today's Cities in a Snap event. I want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, again, usually working, uh, managed to pull out a victory there. Yeah, there was no tie this week. Oh, fortunately, no tie. Dear goodness. Thank you for a more detailed rubric. And the rubric will be made available uh, late tonight, uh, once everyone has kind of seen it, digested it, things like that. And of course, folks, uh, remember, if you do want to support the event and you want to see more events like it, be sure to subscribe. Uh, feel free to uh, contact me directly if you want to be able to help in some way but cannot do so via subscribing or doing patreon any of that stuff and of course folks i do apologize for the technical issues but again like i mentioned this is very taxing on the system so that's why we had those technical issues arise anyways uh we're going to be raiding the winner i want everyone to hop in this raid hop in this rage raid and as we raid away we're going to remind you of the next couple of events coming up so the next event on the calendar is of course the uh, grudge match between kitty claude and cybex streams that'll be happening on tuesday at 5 30 us chicago time so again we'll be tweeting about it we're going to make more announcements so 5 30 p.m us chicago time so basically one hour from now on Tuesday evening, that's when we will be doing it, and it'll be a one-hour event, grudge match, New Orleans, Paris Quarter, or French Quarter, between Kitty Claude and Cybex Streams, exclusively chat vote, and then of course, next weekend is the beginning of the Small Towns rubric, and then also look forward to our Breast Cancer Charity event, uh, midway through the month, on the 18th of October. And remember, folks, if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me directly. Be sure to check out my personal streams at twitch.tv slash Kazjim. Monday, Tuesday, Skylines. Wednesday, Thursday, Strategy Games. And until next time, this is Kazjim and Season Snap signing out. See ya!